This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Saturday edition of the program. You may dial toll-free to join us here, and the number is 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. We've also got the Discord on-air call-in-line rooms over at discord.lrn.fm. Hop into one of those, we'll get you on the air, and you'll sound almost like you're sitting here in the studio with us. Well... The FBI has done it again, Mark. They have once again decided that the best way to bust child pornography dealers is to become child pornography dealers themselves. They did this uh, about three years ago, four years ago, four years ago. um, I think it was March 2015, if I uh, remember correctly. That is from memory. They ran a dark web that's not any place that the average person wanders in. Uh, right. they, they ran a dark web website called The Playpen. Which they took over. Right. Uh, they, it had they been, busted it. Right. They didn't over. create it. It right. was, they busted, they went in and, you know, sort of just took out the leadership and continued to run it for, for three, two weeks. Two, three it was weeks. like three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. And for three weeks in 2015, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigations, was the largest distributor of child pornography on the planet. Yeah, and, like countless hundreds of thousands level kind of numbers of porn files, child porn files, I images, videos. Cannot understand this. Well, now, because the at, the at least in that circumstance, uh, I, I suppose you could say they're trying to catch people. But at the same time, if uh, distributing child pornography is damaging to the victims, that's, and that's what they want you to. That's believe. what we are told, yeah. right? Um, then. Isn't it damaging? Isn't the FBI then damaging the victims? Why is it okay for them to do that? Not saying I want to distribute child pornography. Yeah. I'm just curious. As somebody who pays the paychecks of these people, they seem they seem to spend an inordinate amount of time distributing child pornography. Even outside of that, you know, just in the looking at you know, how undercover operations with police have proceeded in other areas. Look at the war on drugs, right. for Drug, instance. Drugs, is the first G- thing that comes to mind. Generally, it's considered bad form for an undercover officer to actually sling around crack cocaine. You know, they. They're supposed to kind of beat around the bush. They can't, you know, actually sell it for whatever reason because that would be a crime or something. It's looked down upon. I'm not sure if it's a crime when they do it, but they're generally not supposed to do that, as I understand it. Seems like a bad thing. If drugs are bad, you don't want to just keep dealing drugs to people and hope that you catch some of them. Right. Generally, if they're doing an undercover drug sting, they claim they want to sell some some sort of drug and then if somebody says i'm willing to buy that drug well you've already got the the deal on the table you don't need to actually sell them uh the drug you can bust them right then and there and that's what they do in a lot of cases could you not run one of these websites and distribute empty files or pictures of uh you know um martha stewart or uh just a picture you know just add recipes or something you instead could, of child they, pornography and then if somebody downloads the file they mm-hmm. have uh, already committed the crime i yeah, i don't know is there a conspiracy to commit child pornography crime i wouldn't surprise me if there were but ultimately that would just be a conspiracy charge well in that downloading because um, you wouldn't know until you got the file presumably Downloading a file with the intent to download child pornography mm-hmm. sounds criminal-ish. Well, it sounds like something that they would argue is uh, is a criminal thing to do, but it, I don't know if it necessarily is. And further, if they did run a site like you're describing, it wouldn't get anywhere because well, presumably word would get around that hey, there's nothing there. <laughs> you know, don't don't go to that site. The reason why they took over the operation of this playpen site was because it was very popular and there were people using it on a regular basis but now they've done it again after all the controversy over the the playpen takeover where they were they presided over the distribution of hundreds of thousands if not more well there's uh files to the story there's one more uh thing about this is that um at least one of the playpen cases was dropped because somebody took it to trial and demanded uh, to, you know, to, to get some kind of evidence. They wanted to see the Discovery. program that the government had used. So when they when they took over, the FBI took over operation of the site, they planted some sort of code. Spyware. Some kind of malware on the site. And it infected, I think it was like a thousand computers around the world. And they tried to, you know, arrest and prosecute as many of those people as they could. I think they've rounded up, you know, a couple hundred or or so. And so one of those people, the one you're referring to, 
said, all right, well, discovery, rules of discovery, we want to see the code of the program that you put on our client's computer. And the FBI said, no, uh, this is a state secret. We need this code. This is secret. We need to argue for in front of the judge as to why we shouldn't have to turn this over. And basically, after arguing, you know, out of out of court, right, like in the judge's chambers, the uh, judge ruled that, yep, FBI, you've got to turn the code over or you got to drop the case. And so rather than turn over the code, they drop the case. So if we're being protected by the FBI from, you know, these things, then then we got bad service. I mean, you know, they they made a judgment call that maybe many of us would not. Remember, this is supposed to be a government of the people. Mm. Right. Uh, You know, that's the idea anyway. Well, I don't think most people would have done what they did in the first place, which is to say, take over a massive child porn website and then operate it. Uh, hands off, basically. Then we're getting bad customer service out of the FBI. Well, they've done it again now. According to Forbes.com, the FBI has adopted a new tactic in the war on child pornography, taking over suspects' online identities to infiltrate private groups sharing disturbing illegal content. A search warrant obtained by Forbes documents the unprecedented operation in which a now-convicted pedophile's Instagram and Kick accounts were commandeered by the feds. It raises new questions about how federal agents tackle online investigations into child abuse, but also how major social networks are being exploited by predators. The cop's gateway into the shadowy online world was 23-year-old Daxton Hansen from Salt Lake City's uh, suburb of Roy, Utah. When investigators searched his home and interviewed him, he was startlingly honest, admitting to viewing a cornucopia of child pornography under username KitB10. Hansen, who was later sentenced to 48 months in prison after pleading guilty to possession of child pornography, created and was administrator for multiple private groups. All so this guy was really doing something with I mean, 48 months. I, I don't know. I mean, it seems like a seems like a little, just a small amount for running uh, running groups and stuff. But you know, maybe in these groups they were trading nude images and videos of quote prepubescent boys engaged in various sexual acts Yucky. unquote. Then came a gambit for the feds. They presented Hansen, who was only a suspect at the time, with the mundane-sounding FD-1086 form. If he signed it, Hansen would grant investigators control of his accounts on Instagram and Kick, a Canadian-made chat app that's become hugely popular under 18, among under-18s and subsequently child predators. Hansen signed them over. From April 12, 2017, through at least November 13th of 2018, so year and a half, A year and a half. An undercover FBI agent working at the agency's Salt Lake City office assumed Hansen's online identity on Kik, according to a warrant application filed in November of 2018. I think it's worth pointing out here that the last time we reported on this with the the playpen situation, we were raided by the FBI in conjunction with... With that uh, investigation, with, That's correct. within thirty days, that was about three years ago. Now, now the mall here, uh, the the mall here take o- the takeover of the mall here uh, uh, wildlife place. If if y'all mm-hmm. remember the Oregon, uh, yeah, the the sovereign citizens or whatever took over the uh, this this park in like Oregon or something, and uh, it was a big deal. They sort of held out there for a month or something. And uh, the FBI, to my mind, uh, you know, was trying to shoot the last three people. And I've, I found it to be unprofessional that they could have uh, done their jobs in different fashions. That also occurred in that period of time. So I don't know. We haven't ever heard anything on this investigation. But now, three years later, they still have 50 plus devices from They just the took studio. a bunch of our stuff. I, drives, always felt, uh, I, I always felt it was just sort of a warning. Gentlemen, shut your mouths. But that's not what we do here on Free Talk Live. No, no, we didn't get into this to keep our mouths shut. That's for sure. And and again, they're doing basically the same thing, except in, instead this is of for over a year. Yeah, much longer. Uh, instead of taking over a website, they're taking over these this this person's accounts on but these private groups. Yeah, he's he's one of the people who created wherever these groups are. It's not clear. I didn't know you could have groups on Instagram. I, that's you know maybe it's a kick thing. I've I don't know used, anything about it. I've stuff. never used that app, so I have no idea. Um, the toll-free number here. We'll tell you what, what happened. Uh, more about this. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Should the federal government be distributing child pornography in large numbers? Does that make you feel safe? In order to supposedly stop child pornography. Maybe I get it wrong. I'm really curious. 855-450-FREE. Like freedom. This is Free Talk Live. It's 
Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here and bring up whatever's on your mind. Our number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733 with you tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. Also, if you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty, you can do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com. You can reach thousands of people with a bumper sticker, and you know people love to read them. So check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages over at libertystickers.com. As we continue here, we'll take your calls and thoughts about what you want we're sharing an exclusive uh, from Forbes that they, uh, I guess they got this story before anybody else did, about the FBI once again taking over Internet accounts. In this case, specifically, uh, I guess, Instagram and Kick, social media style accounts, that were operated by a child porn distributor. And so they busted the guy, and then they got him to sign over their accounts or his accounts to the FBI. They then apparently ran those accounts for more than a year, like a year and a half, April of 2017 to November of 2018. And we'll tell you more about it coming up here. But, you know, it brings up the, the big question of if you think the federal government is supposed to be going after child pornography, should they be distributing child pornography? Because that's what they're doing. They're presiding over accounts that are distributing actual child pornography or facilitating the distribution of child pornography uh, for, in this case, a year and a half. Clearly, uh, you know, like, clearly child pornography, bad, right? Like yucky, disgusting. Yes. Forcing uh, anybody into, you know, making porn, whether a child or adult, is a detestable thing to do. Right. It's, it's you know, terrible, uh, you know, human trafficking kind of thing. Uh, no doubt about it. But if... Uh, distribution of it is and i think from a philosophical standpoint it's debatable but whatever if if you if that's what you think um and i'm i'm fine i'll agree with you for the sake of this conversation uh if the distribution of child pornography victimizes uh these these people again then did not the government victimize these people over the course of a year and a half and it's a is solid that acceptable argument. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Daniel is in Tallahassee, Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Daniel. Hey, how's it going? What's on your mind tonight? All right. Well, I just want to make a quick comment about the uh, child pornography fishing ring. Yes, sir. I just say fishing because they're just going out there to see what they can get, right? That's what it seems like. So, and in this case, they haven't gotten much of they anything. They haven't gotten anything. They've just, they just distributed, you know, lots and lots of images. No, they really have. Okay, I just tuned in a minute ago, so I didn't. I didn't know, but uh, I don't. I don't like that personally. I think it's wrong. I just want to say I think it's totally wrong. I feel like I feel like they're part of the problem. I think that just perpetuates the problem. If it if it if it's a problem, I think it just makes it worse. It just reminds me of when uh, they pretend to be hookers and they stand on the side of the road to see what to see if anybody pulls over to say, "Hey, baby, uh, how much?" You know, and then they and then they then they slap the cuffs on them. I just feel like that. Because they're lying, they're they're they look like a so so like for the hooker thing. That's what I equate it to. So like you have, you drive down the road, you see oh there's a hooker, but you don't know that it's really a cop in disguise. So really they're making they're bringing you know get it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're focusing and you're you're right. You're not wrong about this. Um, you're focusing on the aspect of the police using deception as part of their job, whether it be to act as though they're a hooker, or act as though they're a drug dealer or whatever. They're deceiving yeah. a person in order to get them to agree to commit some sort of what they consider to be a criminal act. And I find that to be exactly. particularly yeah. detestable, that somebody would be paid to be a professional liar. To That's their job, is to pretend like they are somebody that they're not yeah. in order to deceive well, people into committing, in most cases, what is an act with no victim. In the case of prostitution, in the case, well, the case of... of the yeah. prostitution in many cases yeah, you don't even not, nothing even happened yeah right yeah i'm just i'm just dealing with the actual like what they're doing like i'm not saying whether or not it's morally wrong or right i'm just saying that i mean well, I, I would say it's morally wrong, wrong to use deception in order to trick somebody into a pair of handcuffs basically i, th- I, well, I find yeah, saying, undercover yeah, work to be I, absolutely I, despicable yeah i was just i was just talking about whether or not it's, it's wrong or right to to be to to uh to, to prostitute yourself i just that's what so, I meant there. Oh, but, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, they're so, definitely they're definitely deceiving. And what what I'm saying is, it's like they're just as they're just as much wrong to do that as as, as somebody that's actually doing that uh, on their own, just just looking at those images or whatever. If they say that's wrong, that they're just as much at fault in my eyes because they're pretending to be so. Well, and so 
people are going on there, they see that screen name, and they say, oh, that's just another person that's downloading uh, pedophilia or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's just another hooker on the side of the road, you know, bringing yeah. down our property values. <laughs> and, you know, I just I, I don't I don't like the de- deception aspect, like yeah. you say. That's, that's my totally with that. That's so my usually um, if yeah. somebody – uh, talks about somebody who sexualizes children. Um, it, it's not too long before somebody's like, "Kill him, hang him, mm-hmm. burning's too good," right? Like, uh, you know, that that comes next. Yeah. What are we supposed to do when the federal yeah. government is the one doing it? How do we handle it? Now we know yeah. the crime. What do we do about it? Forbes wrote a great article. I mean, you can publicize but, it, right? You can publicize it. I mean, you, you march on Quantico. That's not going to do anything. I would, uh, <laughs> I would say, Daniel, in this particular case, with the feds actually committing the act that they want to arrest people for, uh, that would be tantamount to the undercover prostitutes, or rather, undercover the reverse in prostitution, where the police are the Johns, where they're the ones seeking the prostitutes okay. to bust the prostitutes. In that case, there are situations where cops have absolutely, as department, you know, with the department looking the other way or either as policy, had sex with women before arresting them. So that would be sort of the, the thing here, right? Like, wow. you're not, as a cop, you know, that. Yeah. 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 I, I think it was Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, it was Hawaii where that's like apparently wow. legal. And uh, I don't know if they've changed the law recently, but they yeah, ought to. it, it wow. happened. Wow, I wonder if anybody's buying for that job. Thanks, Daniel, for the call tonight. I appreciate it, man. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. So this time they took over uh, apparently a Kick and Instagram account that was owned by a child porn distributor. He was allegedly in a number of groups. And apparently, okay, it does say here they're Kick chat rooms. So I was going to say, I didn't think uh, Instagram had a group function. Anyway, Kick chat rooms... Rather than shutting down those chat rooms after they took them over uh, with names like Boy Porn Lovers, P-O-O-R-N, and Gay Perv Young, the agent watched over a mass of child abuse material distributed over Kick for a year and a half. God, that's going to do something to your brain to be able to to, to see all that stuff over and over again. Oh, there's another crazy story about the Facebook content moderators that came out within the last month. Um, I don't remember the site that that uh, facilitated that story, but it was just like the amount of stuff those people have to look at is pretty horrifying. Yeah. Um, as of today, the FBI's kicksting marks the first publicly documented case in which the U.S. government took over the social media of a child pornography suspect. In doing so, the agents let child abuse material spread for months after they'd identified it. Thus far, the government has little to show for it. No subsequent prosecutions based on the protracted sting have yet emerged. The warrant also doesn't disclose whether the agent distributed illegal content or simply tracked others' activities. So if they're not saying, what does that suggest actually happened? Well, if you're admin on the site, um, I think you're a distributor. There's more coming up here. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. 855-450-FREE. Further, there's no indication as to when the chat rooms were shut down, if they ever were. 855-450-FREE. Like Freedom, the FBI and DOJ declined to comment. We'll tell you more about this case. Working for the government means you never have to say you're sorry. Coming up here in moments, you can join us on Free Talk Live. Bitcoin.com is delighted to announce their latest partnership with the gift card specialists at eGifter. With many of the world's leading brands on their roster, it is now easier than ever to get the gift cards of your favorite brands with Bitcoin Cash. To get started, just follow these simple steps. Visit giftcards.bitcoin.com, pick the gift card you want, Follow the instructions on your screen and make your payment using your Bitcoin Cash wallet. Sit tight and your gift card will be delivered to you as soon as it's ready. That's giftcards.bitcoin.com. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the show. You can dial in toll-free. Our number here is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just head on over to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. We do have Twitch, and uh, that is a video streaming service. That we did an after show on last night, which was Twitch only, so you can check that out on our videos uh, 
tab or whatever over on Twitch. Go to twitch.lrn.fm. That'll take you right to our Twitch channel, and you can uh, follow us there. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you can use your Amazon Prime free Twitch subscription and throw that over onto the LRN channel, and then that helps us out a little bit. It's basically a couple bucks that they send to us rather than keeping it for themselves. So you can help us out if you're a Twitch or an Amazon Prime member. There's instructions just below our video window at twitch.lrn.fm on how to link up your accounts. And you can send us over that subscription. Unfortunately, you have to do it manually every single month. So it, there's no set it and forget it, which would be really nice if there were. Uh, but anyway, that's something you can do for us. And you can follow us there easily over at Twitch. Dot LRN dot FM. As we continue here, we'll take your calls and thoughts about whatever you want, uh, but I do want to make sure that you know about Bitcoin.com. It's your premier source for everything Bitcoin related. They can help you choose a Bitcoin wallet, buy some Bitcoin, and even show you where you can spend your Bitcoin, like SaveItPurse.com. You can also read the latest news or engage with the community on the Bitcoin forum. Plus, if you need to get the basics on Bitcoin, there's no better place than Bitcoin.com. Easy to remember bitcoin.com you and mark here as we continue a little bit more about the story where the fbi busted a child porn suspect who apparently just admitted to having it and watching it and such and he then signed a form that allowed the fbi to take over his instagram and kick accounts i hope he uses those four years in prison to uh you know do some kind of therapy on himself and uh, break whatever uh d- bad habits that he had developed at some point, and I'm sure that it was uh, relieving to get all that stuff off of his shoulders when he talked to the FBI. However, when he turned over his uh, stuff his to logins. the FBI, he has logins and that sort of thing to the FBI, they worked, he was an admin on these sites, mm-hmm. and they, which basically makes Chat him, rooms, yeah. not sites, well, chat rooms. Okay, these chat rooms, he, they, they see, uh, he sees the images going by, he uh, has control to some extent what's mm-hmm. going on, he can kick people out and that kind of thing. Um, the FBI took over his stuff and just continued to run the site for, for a, year a year and a half. half. And at this point, doesn't have any arrests. No, nope, not a single prosecution at all has uh, resulted from this, at least that's been on the record so far, according to Forbes, who got the exclusive on the story. And they're not even sure, according to the warrant, whether or not the chat rooms have even been shut down uh, at this point. The commandeered account is no longer available on Kick, though the company said it's never been notified by law enforcement of any undercover operation. The case reintroduces tough questions over the merits of allowing harmful web behavior in order to catch criminals committing the same wrongs on a larger scale. Those questions came to the fore with the capture and maintenance of the dark web child pornography site Playpen four years ago. And it's a situation likely to become more familiar as criminals manipulate lightly policed Internet platforms whose users range in the billions. Last month, YouTube was forced to purge 400 channels after a YouTuber showed that predators were timestamping and commenting on videos in which children were in, quote, sexually implicit positions, unquote. Links to actual Ugh. child porn were placed in the comments of those videos as well. Major advertisers whose ads were shown alongside those videos swiftly ditched YouTube. The Google-owned streaming site said it was deeply concerned well, about the, the issue. In this case of the YouTube ones, it's basically just people's home movies right. online and then weirdos perving on their kids right so here's a tip don't put your videos of your kids in a public place if you don't want weirdos to find them you know if you want to share a video with grandma you can upload it as unlisted on youtube and then just give grandma the unlisted url and then only only the people to whom she shares that url will likely ever see it so there are ways to you know not show the world You know, your kids in the pool or bathtub or whatever it is that you're showing them. Right. Right. Uh, The Google-owned streaming site said they were deeply concerned about the issue and last week banned all comments on videos containing children. The Sting operation. All All right. (laughs) Seems a little excessive. Well, uh, but, I mean, you know, what are the points? That, uh, comments suck. Co- Google, uh, yeah. excuse me, uh, YouTube's comments suck the most, though. I mean, this uh, it, this is a cesspool. Uh, I mean, YouTube yeah. comments are terrible. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. There's more on the story about what happened in uh, Utah with the feds taking over child porn accounts. Uh, let's go first, though, to Tim in South Carolina. Tim, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey. Um, I got to say, I disagree with you completely. I mean, at the end of the day, we can all agree that pedophilia is absolutely immoral. Okay. But beyond that, it's, it's against the law. So engaging in it is against the law. How do you combat that? Is it you against the law when they website? do it, though? Well, it's against the law for an individual.
individual to, to do it. Now, for law enforcement to combat it, it has to have uh, uh, some tactics that can allow them to be able to uh, gather evidence and find uh, perpetrators that are engaging in illegal activity. If you just shut down one website, uh, they pop up 10. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so at the end of the day... It's kind of how the drug war goes, huh? To, well, look, it's the same thing for prostitution. I mean, you know, you can you know, argue the merits of whether it's uh, moral or immoral, but at this point it's illegal. So if you're engaging in that activity, and we all know that it, it, it has some inherent problems, and, um, and, and well, and the only problems are that culture. it's illegal. The only well, problem with prostitution is that it's illegal right, because otherwise it would be a respected industry. Well, like, for example, an undercover operation that's going after the mafia. Uh, now, in that process, they had to um, uh, they had to go undercover, um, or in a drug deal, they had to go undercover, create a, a legend. You think they should whatever. be able to sell the drugs that they intend to bust people for? I think that at the end of the day, they're put in very difficult places. To, uh, but they, that didn't answer job. my question. Well, wait a second. Oh, that's, look, I'm not. I'm not in a, a court of law here. I'm giving you my. Uh, you, you asked I'm asking you for opinion. your opinion. The, it, Should I, they be able to I'm, sell I'm, the very drugs opinion. that they're then going to turn around and arrest you for? Okay. If you want to give me a second to respond, I'm happy to Please. respond. Okay. Good. So at the end of the day, I don't think that selling the drug is a, is a good way. But, the, you, you know, obviously a drug deal happens when somebody puts themselves out to sell that product and somebody's about to buy them. And at that moment, that's when they catch the guy. Well, that makes so sense. All these guys, um, but at that point, that the, the police that's haven't how, put that's in... how a drug deal. That's how a drug dealer is, is, is busted. Is, yeah, the, a that makes the, some sense. The but the cops aren't putting drugs on the street. Prostitution. He's not listening. Sorry. He's talking, Mark. Yeah, but the the cops aren't putting drugs on the street. Let me let's let's start. Let's step back for a second. Is the distribution does the distribution of child pornography create a victim? The drug. No, the no, drug no. Wait, wait. I'm asking a different question. Just a second. It's, well, you can. It's, it's, I'll let you, you say go I'm on. I'm not listening. I'm listening exactly okay. to what you just said. Does a, a, does the distribution of child pornography create a victim? Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely it does. Did the and Federal so Bureau of Investigations... So by allowing, did, by, by um, administering and allowing uh, the opportunity to gather evidence and find perpetrators, the only way that you can do that in any uh, logical way... Is to is be a to perpetrator? Be to, it, you're not a perpetrator. You're in the process of gathering evidence. You're finding those that are in the process. You're finding okay. those. Okay, wait a second. Are, are, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I ran a ring of people who run around punching people in the face, I clearly have victims. If the police if, if then take over the ring and, and run around and punch officer, people in the faces, they're creating victims. You said the distribution of child pornography officer, creates a victim. I'm asking okay, you, is listening. the FBI creating victims? If an undercover officer is taking down a drug dealer or taking down a mafia mob, and there are crimes that are happening in his presence during that time, does that mean that he's the one that's doing something illegal? No. He's in the process of taking somebody down. It takes time. for How many um, – okay, so if, if that's the case, how many people need to be busted for every 100,000 images and videos that the FBI facilitates? Hey, man, as many people as we can take off of the street. The <laughs> pedophilias are a bunch of Dude, you're employing the Federal Bureau of Investigations to distribute child pornography and making excuses for it. And so far in this investigation, they haven't arrested anybody. And it's been a year and a half it. of distributing child pornography. So there's this your investigation. Bizarre. It's a bunch of crap. Thanks for the call. More coming up. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free if you want to join us. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got the Discord on-air call-in line rooms. Just jump into our Discord server. It's open 24-7. You go to discord.lrn.fm, and you will find listeners in there basically around the clock. I mean, there are some times where there's a few hours where people don't say anything. But generally, you know, any old random time, there's going to be people in there uh, over at discord.lrn.fm. There are also other rooms besides the on-air now rooms, kind of the main room. Uh, but there's other ones like cryptocurrency and gaming, other discussions. Place There's a place for memes. Uh, there's a place to drop in news stories, show prep, stuff you want us to talk about on the air. I get a lot of good show prep out of that uh, show prep room. I'd say I get even better show prep out of that than I do from the Free Talk Live website, which allows you to submit show prep as well. 
So thank you to everybody who participates there. And if you haven't jumped in there yet, go check it out. It's free. And the, there is a web version of the app over at discord.lrn.fm. But I recommend downloading the actual Discord app and then connecting that way. All right, let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. More on the FBI undercover operation. We just had a guy on the – go ahead. Yeah, the, the guy on the line, um, basically this was his question. I don't think he, he could have formulated it better, but it's hard to be on the radio. Um, what? How does law enforcement go about enforcing these laws and trying to prevent the distribution of child pornography? I mean, that's kind of what he was asking is, is well, this is what they got to do because – they got to do. They they got to try, mm-hmm. uh, and this is the way they do it. So they they distribute a whole bunch of child pornography over the course of a year and a half. They arrest no one, uh, but at least they're experimenting in how to, I don't know, catch people or something. Uh, is the idea? I don't I don't necessarily agree with it, but I think that there's an interesting question. The interesting question would be, and, and I don't know anything about computers. Can't well, here's step one. Why I mean, can't look, they figure out who's uh, yeah, going and downloading? I, I know, know a thing or t- I know a thing or two about computers. Yes, and if if I were the FBI in this case, and some child porn guy that the, the way they busted gave them access, which is what happened to his Kick and Instagram accounts, and then you log in and you find these you know pervert chat rooms with child porn being distributed, then the FBI all they'd have to do is go to Kick or Instagram or whatever and say, uh, yeah, we're going to need the IP addresses for all these. Participants, because you know these guys aren't using their real names, right? But they're they're probably many of them are probably not smart enough to use like Tor or something like that. I don't even know if you can use these systems over Tor. Um, I guess if you had Tor on your uh, router or something, you can like certainly that. use a VPN. Yeah, yeah, well, that's not the same thing as as Tor, but no, yeah, but Tor has a. No, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Towards the anonymizing, it's one of the anonymizing systems. But anyway, there are going to be some of them who are, you know, don't know what they're doing, and they're going to just be logged in on their normal accounts or whatever on their phone, and uh, you just get the IP addresses, and then go have your search warrant issued for those people. But Kick said they didn't get a single, uh, they 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 didn't have a single contact from the FBI about any kind of undercover operation. So the FBI was just letting those rooms run for a year and a half. And collecting whatever information they're collecting, I can't imagine, you know, what you're going to right. get out of a room like that besides you, child porn distributed by people with anonymous usernames. I would think you could let a room like that continue on for a while and then just go pick off, uh, cherry pick the ones that you consider to be the greatest perpetrators or something. You uh, could. I mean, if, if they're going to do this, you could, in, in the course of a year and a half, you can figure out who's the movers and the shakers in these things rather than just the, the lurkers or yeah. whatever it is they do. Um, and you can go in and pick one or two of them off every month, and it's just and like they'd they're be so getting, quiet, yeah, because nobody would, you wouldn't necessarily would know. even know how it happened because right. they would just go away and nobody would think anything of it. Right? You get a word, you get a search warrant uh, based on this. You go in, you search the house, you find the stuff. Uh, there you go. What right. do you want? If and if that person uh, gets arrested and disappears from the chat room, it means nothing to the rest of the chatters, right? Oh, you know, anonymous person has left the room, <laughs> right? right? So, uh, yeah, there's all these questions as to why they did things the way that they do them. And, of course, they're not commenting. Uh, But let's go to your calls and thoughts. Uh, We'll start out with Gilbert calling from the Internet. Gilbert, you're on Free Talk Live. Gilbert from the Internet. Yes, I uh, wanted to expose how the FBI is is really not looking into the real pedophiles, the real uh, uh, people that are uh, pushing this stuff, because if you do, then you're – you must be a racist for some reason. They've convinced us they're so powerful that you can't even touch them. What does racism and, and have to do with this? Have, it's called because you can't, if you touch the, if you if you tell them that they're pedophiles, that because they believe in the Talmud, that, which the Talmud says you can have sex with three-year-old babies. It's the Jews. And, oh, this person and, and is claiming that Jewish and, people are pedophiles. That's that's pretty messed up. Dude. No, I didn't say the Jewish people. Well, what no, are you saying? Say the What's people. the racist thing that you're I'm talking about? Anybody here. who believes in the Talmud, you could believe in it. Are you Jew? Does that? Isn't the these Talmud the are, holy the, Jewish Chinese book? It's one of them. The yeah, but there's also a, a Christian Jewish book, and I believe in that one. It, and I believe Wasn't in Sarah things. below I the? Um, disciple. Yeah, I mean, I think Sarah was below the age of consent when uh, what, what we would consider the age of consent. So was Mary. Yeah, Mary was very young when God impregnated yeah, her. Yeah, but the Talmud. The Talmud clearly says you can have uh, sex with a three-year-old, and I've, I've bet ten thousand dollars on the radio to anybody who who, pro- who proves to me that I'm wrong. And it also it, it, you it, seem it really obsessed with this. Jesus... What's up with that? Why, why is it the Talmud that you're so upset with? 
because right now, for example, I, I'm neither Republican or Democrat. I don't care. But the thing is that, uh, right, I, and I don't agree with anything Omar, Ilar Omar says or does, but except for this one issue that she exposes APAC that they give too much money for to for, to so the So it's not just the Taliban. It's, real, it's, it's a like foreign government. All the Jews, me? right? No, it's not the Jews. Of course not. Well, what I is love it? The Jews, Jesus Christ, his disciples. Pardon me. What, well, what is it then? It's 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 the Talmud and, and that belief system. Talmud and, uh, and like to, so what are you people, saying? The FBI should have invest- met. I have yet to meet a Jew that uh, believes that uh, sex with three year olds is acceptable. Yeah, I mean these are old, ancient, stupid books, right? And all of them are. Yeah, what do you want and the well, FBI to do exactly about the Talmud? Well, just look at this. For example, the Talmud goes with the Kabbalah, and all of these Talmud and Kabbalah believers, like Alistair Crowley, for example, he's he, dead. He, he, we got he him handled on in his books. What yeah, do you want the FBI to do? Well, look into these people. Why, why are they allowing these people? Who are these who people? Who are these? Yeah. Alex, Alex or Crowley you can't look into unless you just pull up a sepultura and break it open. <laughs> but, uh, All right. Yeah. Thanks for the call, Gilbert. Toll free number here is 855-450-FREE. Uh, you know, it's nice when people can answer a question, but we haven't had any calls like that so far here. <laughs> well, we have uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. You know, if he'd said, instead of the FBI doing this, they should investigate their own bosses, now he would have been on to something, right? Like with the whole uh, Jeffrey Epstein situation. I don't know if you've been following that at all. I've been paying a bit of a- attention. Yeah, so this is the p- very politically connected guy. This who, is the guy, what, Lolita something? The, he had a plane that was allegedly called Lolita Express. Lolita Express, yes. Uh, he has his own island uh-huh. in the Caribbean, private island, and uh, has been accused and Multiple, basically yeah. there's a mountain of evidence. Yeah, mountain of evidence. Uh, <laughs> essentially, he took a guilty plea on some lesser charges for this and got off essentially scot-free with no real jail time uh, for ostensibly molesting young girls, maybe teenage, young teen uh, girls on this island in this this airplane and so on. And there's uh, there's still something working its way through the courts on that. There's a very detailed story that the Miami Herald did. Uh, it's on their website right now. And if this is search, Trump's next door neighbor? They allege that he's a neighbor. I'm not sure if that's okay. next door. Next door, okay. Uh, but you know, it sounds like they live close by to one another. Ostensibly, Trump's been on the plane as well and at uh, some point Bill clinton at some point clinton has definitely been on the plane right. this guy you know hobnobs it with a bunch of the uh the big names out there now i mean i've been on a private jet once um mm-hmm. and i don't know what that private jet's been used for so i don't think that being on the plane is necessarily an indictment of anything no it's not and but, no one has alleged that trump you know raped them or anything like that. right so. uh, well i mean no uh, there there have been people that have alleged well, that, at but least not any young ladies the, yeah. right they have an uh, in association with jeffrey epstein they have not alleged right that. <laughs> so i i think it's interesting and should be looked into because it doesn't surprise me but no one me. wants to look into it and that's what the uh, when, well, the, when yeah, you read people the don't look Hero. into rich people's uh, proclivities well when you not only rich people but very politically connected rich people oh sure the uh, the Miami Herald article it's broken up into three parts it's really exhaustive i mean really exhaustive interesting very detailed reporting um, you know some information coming out for the the very first time and when you when you read this story about Epstein it's clear that these prosecutors who were going after him were neutered somehow. Like, they were continuing to, I'm putting quotes around, prosecute him, but basically dropping every ball they could possibly drop, including allowing him to just take this ridiculous uh, plea deal. And it was just this, I mean, from the perspective of what has happened to other people who've been accused of similar so-called crimes, uh, he got nothing compared to what everybody else gets. I mean, he basically got a slap on the hand for what would put other people in prison Under for, the jail. Yeah. for five, ten, maybe even you know more years. Um, and, and he didn't just do this once. He was accused of doing it to multiple people. So, I mean, it's just fascinating stuff. So, yeah, if that was what our caller had said, I'd been like, yeah, the FBI should investigate that. But they're not. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That well, that whole case, the should another like, policing agency be investing investigating the FBI over the distribution of child pornography in this case? Good question. If so, who would that be? Yeah, who watches the watchers? Yeah, eight fifty five four fifty three. The answer. There's, there's more coming up. Free talk lot. You love Bitcoin. It's the future, right? Well, no, not if everyone stops using it. I mean, think about it. How many places in your town take Bitcoin? One? None? Let's be real. If this Bitcoin thing is ever going to happen, it's going to need your help. 
The good news is the guys at AnyPay have your back. We built a website called HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com, and it's a place you can send any business. And they'll be set up to take Bitcoin in five minutes. HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll free here as we launch into the second hour of the program. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Mark. Uh, it's a live Saturday show. Numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. Talking about yet another example of the FBI presiding over the distribution of God knows how many child pornography images and videos that were being transferred over a year and a half's period of time in what appear to be multiple uh, online chat groups that they gained access to after they arrested one of the participants who then signed over access to the FBI, which I didn't know they had. I didn't know you had to sign over access to that kind of thing. I figured they they arrested the dude; they could just take over. But I guess he had to consent to it, and he did. Maybe in return for some sort of leniency or what? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it seems like clearly he did. He got, he got forty eight months. Forty eight months for being the admin on a child porn ring. Right. So they took over the the uh, essentially the administrative capabilities, and then they just sat there and monitored these sites. There's no evidence of any charges being brought at this point, and some people seem to be so I don't know what the right word is confused by this or like so willing to watch the FBI commit the very same act that they themselves claim is illegal and damaging, allegedly. Obsequious to, is the terms. Yeah, okay. So yeah, sniveling, cow-towing. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. I mean, what, what other explanation is there for, I mean, we just gave a system to an easy, implementable system to pick off uh, the distributors of child pornography inside this ring. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very implementable, very easy to do, and the FBI isn't doing it. Well, it may not be easy, but at the very least, it could do something. Standard police work. Yeah. You go to uh, Kick. You say, "What are the IP addresses for these people?" Which um, they didn't this, do. This user right here. Uh, they they then go through the reams of information as they sign in from different places. Yeah. They figure out where this person lives. They go to their house. They Get a warrant. Shouldn't be hard. Uh, they then search their computers. They right. pr either do or do not find child pornography on the computers. They have either then committed a crime or they have not committed a crime. This is simple police work. A year and a half, they've done nothing. We go to your calls and thoughts. You can bring up anything that you want. There's more to the story, by the way, from Forbes. They got a real detailed piece on this. We'll get into some more of what happened uh, according to the warrant that the FBI had uh, received. Let's go, though, first to your calls and thoughts. We have Corbin on the line in Rhode Island watching us on YouTube. Go ahead, Corbin. Hello. Hey, Corbin, you're on the air. Hi. I'd like to address like the current like situation and like the, some of the callers. Sure. For the callers, I don't feel like... For the cause, I just feel like they don't like know what the hell they're talking about. They'll say, "Oh, religion is this," and like they'll, they'll blame it on the religion, and they'll blame it on the race. Race and religion has nothing to do with it. If you do something yet you know it's against the law, it's your own fault. It's no one else's fault but yours. Like, but I find it funny how people can like say, "Sure, what you're saying is religion. only blame the individual. You shouldn't blame the person's race or their religion for the individual's choice." Correct, because. If say if one guy does something like if one guy looks up that type of stuff, it, it's his fault. That's basically point blank. It's his fault. It's not no one else's fault. If he knew what he was doing was wrong, right? Technically, he should know what the consequences are. And there's also more I want to say about like the you said about the kick groups and all that. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, did some research into that, and it's, it's unbelievable. Like you have like kids, like like little kids, like under the like under the ages of thirteen. And like, because one of my friends, like, they do undercover stuff because on YouTube, they there's, like, people who, like, try to expose pedophiles and all that. Okay. You know what I mean? No, oh, yeah. And they'll, they'll do, like, and I, I salute them for doing that. I, I salute anyone who's, like, knows, like... I think that if you look hard like, enough, emotions. you'll find pedophiles everywhere, which is to say that you will... Right. Uh, make, people have called this show and accused us of being pedophiles, and I'm not even sure why. Like, because they're crazy and, um, you know, like... They want to make themselves look famous and try to get... Right, like, so I think that there's a danger to this uh, <laughs> running around and uh, being, a, you know, a amateur pedophile detective, but I think you should be free to Everybody do needs it. a hobby. Everybody needs a hobby, right? <laughs> right. 
I was, I was uh, probably like a little mixed up there because a lot of emotion right now at the moment. But like, I find it funny. Like, there's parents who give these kids phones. They should like warn them about this. There's like, there's some parents out there who will warn the kids. So well, tell me about the so. tell me about the kick thing because I've never used the app before. Are these rooms just publicly listed, or do you have to like know where to go to pull the room up? It's like a, a secret um, URL. Well, I don't use. Well, I don't use kick a lot as myself because. Since a lot of issues are going on with like the world now, like nowadays, like since like many people are like listed as pedophiles and all, you know what I mean? I try okay. to stay away from that stuff. Because I just figured you I said it sounded like you knew a thing or two about it. Thanks for the call, Corbin. I, I appreciate I it, man. Thank I, you. Toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's go. I'm to- curious about these uh, people under the age of uh, thirteen and how much t- texting, uh, you know, how much chatting they're doing on these things. I mean, I can't imagine your, you know, deep conversations are going on in these rooms. My son's uh, eleven and. I, he wouldn't have any interest in this. Uh, he wouldn't want to. He wouldn't want to spend that kind of time typing, honestly. But especially on your phone. My God, typing yeah, it's on aw- the phone. awful. Unless uh, you have like a Bluetooth keyboard, it makes it a little better. Let's go to uh, Bob, listening to WIBC FM in Indianapolis. Hello, Bob. Hey, how are you this evening? Good. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, reading on the internet uh, about these women that are so afraid of climate change they don't want to have kids anymore. Well, that's crazy. I did. He- I did see uh, a story of uh, women that aren't going to have kids <laughs> because of climate change. Yeah, I mean, what if the world blew apart in the next minute? What the hell are we going to do about? Are they it? anti-natalists, Mark? No, they're just. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't know. I mean, they're they're taking an opportunity to get some PR. Basically, uh, they they've got an issue. Uh, the issue is climate change. They're going I to, see. you know, we're they're they're going to get the the story the way they're going to get the story. And we are are putting our ovaries on strike. Don't worry, ladies. Um, none of us are going to knock you up anyway. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I agree with him hundred percent. So. But uh, yeah, I mean that's just crazy. I mean, uh, I don't uh, as for climate change, whether it's true or not true. I have no control over what my mother nature does. Neither does the rest of us. You yeah, know I tend mean? to be with you on that one, Bob. I, I want to thank you for the call tonight, man. I definitely appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I like what Gene, the Christian anarchist, has said on this, and that is that uh, you know we're, we're relatively you know, insignificant when it comes to the size and the scope of the entire planet. And that does have its way of kind of taking care of itself and, and cleaning itself up. That's not to say that people shouldn't be concerned about, you know, things. But I don't think the planet is going to go away as a result of humans on it. Yeah. But humans can um, make a given area uninhabitable for themselves. Sure. There's seven, bil- seven plus billion of them, so they can make a lot of areas uninhabitable for themselves. Uh, and that's all that uh, most people are talking about is is uh, what are we doing to the environment? We're certainly changing things. Uh, coral reefs of uh, the oceans become more acidic. Why? I don't know. Looks like uh, it might have something to do with climate change or human activity. Let's go to Jet calling from somewhere in the U.S. Jet, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh oh, hi guys. Haven't talked for a while, but um, since uh, Saturday night is the government night, I'd love to help you guys out. Thank you. All right. Can I get? Um, I wanted to pass on that, first of all, this concept of government is pure psychology. In other words, if the masses don't believe in it, it can't exist. That's true. And, uh, and secondarily, police, FBI, all these people calling themselves uh, uh, government or law enforcement or whatever, they're just other people. Yeah. So if I could get you to repeat after me. Well, before you go any further, I'd like to point out, you know, yeah. one of the callers there, he was uh, basically saying that the, the FBI and presumably other policing organizations need to have wide and uh, nearly unchecked powers to investigate stuff like this, which gives them basically extra rights. You know, their badges grant yeah, them magic. extra rights that the rest of us don't get. And I just don't get that kind of thinking. No, no. My position has always been, and uh, this is what I want to impress upon you guys, repeat after me, that that uh, these people are just other people who have no right to do anything that you or I may not do. They're supposed to be our our, our delegates, our servants, and all that. <laughs> so, I a, so I have a little 60-second uh, game for you. Okay. If you have a, a small piece of paper, uh, split it down the middle on the left-hand side, write these five words. Government, federal, state, county, and city. And on the right-hand side, um, write down people, mafia, um, let's see, goons, psychos, gangs, thugs, 
or anything else you want to write down. Now, you've, you've seen the match game, you know, where you have the words on the left, the words on the right, and you match them up. Stand by, Jet. To hold on for We're going to come Jet. back with more of your thoughts in moments. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here and bring up whatever you want. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. By the way, big thanks going out to Bitcoin Photographer, who is a Free Talk Live silver amplifier. And the AMP program is something that anybody who can afford five bucks a month can join. So not a whole lot, but it makes a big difference for us when you do it. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is you send five bucks a month to Free Talk Live, PayPal, credit card, or even Bitcoin BTC. And Free Talk Live will invest that into what we do. It'll help us get on new radio stations. We're hovering at about 194 radio stations right now. Uh, We'd love to get to 200. It's totally possible. It's doable. And we can do it with your help. And you'll get some cool perks, too, some benefits uh, that, you know, give you special access to certain things like our Discord server. There's a couple of AMP chat rooms there. The amplifiers, there's a special uh, forum on Facebook for those of you still on Facebook and such. So you can go and learn more about that over at amp.freetalk. little jabs. Live.com. Little passive, passive aggressive stuff for those of you still on Facebook. A lot of people are leaving Facebook, Mark. amp.freetalklive.com. Please go there, get signed up. And we really do appreciate it. It's amp.freetalklive.com. As we continue, we'll take your calls and your thoughts about what you want. Jet is on the line with us somewhere in the U.S. You had me write down a couple of columns, left column, right column. On the left column, uh, the words government, federal, state, county, city. On the right column, people, mafia, goons, gangs, thugs. Now, what what now? Yeah. Well, you can add any number. Well, as you know, as you might recall, I'm a dedicated disciple of Christ who um, understands that human government is nothing but satanic and evil. So I've been trying over the years to try to get you guys to eliminate the word government from your vocabulary, and I might have come up with a way to get you out of it, and that is by eliminating the word government as a noun but turning it into an adjective. So we, rather than, uh, because as I said before, the people calling themselves government have no right to do anything that you or I may not do. Right. So what we do is we move that over to the left side, use it as an adjective, and call them what they are. Government uh, government thugs, government people. Goons. I see what you're saying, government goons. Yeah, and I do that actually pretty often on uh, my blogs over at freekeen.com. Frequently I'll refer to them as the government gang here in town, the Keene gang or the people calling themselves the city of Keene. So I, I feel like I'm pretty good yeah. at this, Jet, but you know I may not be as consistent as you might like. Yeah, but that's that's the way to get the word government as far as a noun out of our vocabulary because yeah, sure. they're just other people. They have no right to do anything that they do. And, and it's important and I, to remind people about myself, that. But so you just you. want to eliminate the term government as a noun. And what's the reason? Well, because they have – people have been raised, grown up, taught, educated to consider that this concept is legitimate, and it's not. No one has the right to rule over you. I mean, your neighbor, if they – your friends, neighbors, and relatives, just because they move from that house into an office somewhere does not um, – transcend them into some godlike position. They're just other people. They're failed flesh and blood sinners. They're just um, with all their problems. In other words, they have no right to do anything that you or I may do to another individual. That's just how I feel about it, how I see it. Well, and also, and if the more power well. you give a person, because that's what we're talking about here, right? Like government isn't anything but people. Um, the more power you give a person, the more likely that person is to become corrupt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, it's just always just scientific always, fact. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it is. It's actual scientific fact. They've they've uh, they've seen these things, and you know, there's there's the the rare person that doesn't become corruptible, but not they're they're darn rare. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been watching this program. Um, I can't remember what it's designated survivor or something like that, and it's just uh, it's just crazy how 
uh, people have turned this concept of what we were supposed to have here in America as government upside down to where these legislators and governors and all that, they're kings, the kings and little Caesars and all that kind of thing. People stand up for them, you know, when they come in the room and all this stuff. Yeah. when in fact, they're supposed to be they the highest honorable. level of servanthood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, any number of things. But but really, I'm sorry to be a Johnny one note, but that that's really. Yes, but you play it so is, but, well. Yeah, I don't mind. Jet, thank you uh, for the call. By the way, we, we met your daughter down at Anarchapulco, so that was kind of fun. She came up to yeah, the table. This is good, kid. And said, yeah. said hello to us. Yeah, and, I, thanked, I thanked, her, uh, thanked her for you, basically. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't usually work that way. She's, but... been, she's been traveling the world. I've been feeding this stuff into her brain, so hopefully she's disseminating it. Well, if she's at Anarchapulco, there's a good chance that it's worked. Hey, thanks for the call, Jet. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, and, you know, it's a good suggestion to keep in mind that. The government is just people. And if all people are created equal, and I think that's a fairly popular belief, then those people don't have any extra rights than you. Or they shouldn't. But as Jet pointed out, it's the belief in the idea of government that makes them powerful. It makes them uh, – it puts them above you. And that's a choice that you've made. And you can unmake that choice. Unfortunately, it won't make them go away right away because not enough people have unmade that choice. Not enough people have changed their mind about how they view the state, how they view government um, as a instead of, you know, some well, sort of his his presumption is, is that we have a uh, powerful platform from which to broadcast. And he's right about that. Um, and yeah, it's all right. Uh, 200 radio stations. Yeah, not not bad. too bad. Uh, it ain't it ain't Rush Limbaugh, nope. but. Uh, it's you know it's not some little uh, 4500 watt right. FM in Sarasota, Florida either. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, and if we sculpt our verbiage, that uh, you know that can be powerful and meaningful. I think he's correct. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that I've tried to do over over the years. Uh, the toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Sorry, eight fifty five four fifty free. Uh, it just shows how powerful that that uh, sort of the societal programming is. Sure. Um, you know, you use this term government. Well. Well, it, it, comes, it comes at you in school. It comes at you in media. I mean, it's just constantly thrown at people. So it's understandable why they look at it differently. They've been told many stories about government that you're the government. It's government by the people. Yeah, it's they, for the people. They tell us uh, those those little lies in school when we're young enough right. to believe them. I uh, went make out, sure you do the pledge every day. I went out with a a friend last night. Uh, you know, we went to a little cigar bar, and uh, you know, we as sometimes it happens at a bar, you end up in a conversation with a person you don't know, and he was adamant about the notion that the government needs to return to the people. Hmm. And I said, the people are idiots. And he looked at me and blinked. Like nobody's ever said that to him before, <laughs> but you know when they're, they're, when it comes to voting, there's no wisdom of crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just look at wisdom of crowds. You take the premise uh, of, of the book. Well, you take the premise of the book, and it's when they have you know sort of a profit motive, or when they've got money on at, mm -hmm. at the line, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then they get smart. But when they don't have anything on the line. They, you get well. You get Trump and Hillary, right? You get uh, Obama or uh, you know whoever it is. You get the crappiest choices you could possibly be handled. I can only imagine how bad they're going to be in twenty twenty. The toll free number. If you want to join us here, live Saturday edition continues. Our number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We've also got the Discord on air call in line rooms where you can join. It's the top four rooms on our Discord server. Over at discord.lrn.fm, just hop into one of those four. We'll join you in the room after we notice you there, and you'll get on the air with us. Sound great. we got plenty more time for you if you want to join us. Plus, we got more on the FBI running another child porn distribution ring. It's Free Talk Live. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. It's Free Talk Live, and we're here. Live Saturday edition for you. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Also, want to make sure you know that ForkFest is coming up three months from now, basically. It's going to be happening June 13th 
through the 18th at the beautiful Rogers Campground in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. It is just an absolutely spectacular location to be. Even if you were just there with, you know, your loved ones, just your family or, you know, lover or whatever. Uh, it's a beautiful location. The mountains are absolutely incredible. The vista, the view uh, is just it's wonderful. Gorgeous. And uh, But then when you're surrounded by other liberty-minded folks, libertarians, voluntarists, liberty-loving anarchists, then it gets even more fun because there's all kinds of cool stuff that uh, can happen, and some of it will happen at ForkFest because it's decentralized, meaning nobody is in charge of ForkFest. Somebody was asking in the ForkFest chat room today on Telegram. Take me to your leader. Isn't isn't ForkFest, uh, doesn't it have reservations at uh, Rogers Campground? I'm like, ForkFest doesn't exist outside of the idea of that, that it should be these five days before the Porcupine Freedom Festival happens in New Hampshire at the same campground. Otherwise, everybody just kind of does their own thing. If you want to create a thing for people to do, do it. You want to put a musical act on, put a poker game together, or you know, put a class together. I know Jay Noon, one of our Wednesday night co-hosts, is going to be doing Man Camp. A so friend of his gonna is cool. going to be making uh, knives and axes. As part of Man Camp. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's going to be a party tent every single night, like a big, apparently a big tent from the guys over at AnyPay.Global. They're going to be, uh, I think Steven's actually going to do DJing every single night, which is an incredible level of uh, dedication to the the, the act of uh, throwing a party. So they're going to do that, and that's cool. And I know Jim Babb's been there every year throwing a party. He hasn't announced it yet, but every, he's done it the last two years, so I suspect he'll do the final night party again this year. I'm just you know throwing that out there because it's happened the last two. People can create whatever it is that they want to, or you can just show up and hang out. You know, It's up to you. Go to ForkFest.Party, and you can learn more about it. You can link over to the ForkFest forum. You can also link to the ForkFest Telegram chat there. And uh, once again, ForkFest dot party as we continue with your calls and thoughts doug is in illinois you're on free talk live go ahead yeah i can't believe that people are calling in and pretty much claiming that the fbi should have unlimited power you know when you have authority and they have great authority without any type of accountability you have the elite tyranny the people who have called in that have claimed that should be moving over to north korea for the fact that you, you could do an entire future future show on the corruption of the DOJ FBI for a four-hour program, and you wouldn't be able to cover all of it. Yeah, you couldn't scratch I mean, the they, surface. No, that. I mean, they violate, like here, the big thing for me can be they violate the Fourth Amendment continually. If you violate the Fourth Amendment and you're an agent of the government, you should be thrown in jail. You should be held accountable for that. Mm. They do whatever the hell they want to do. Sure. You know, but, but I did want to bring up the pornography issue. Look, yeah. I believe that people who are involved in child pornography should be locked up. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to defend it, but I, I think that— And by that like, you mean, thinking, just to be clear, you mean people who force children into sex-related videos and photographs, right? You don't mean like, right. you don't mean like a right. teenage boy or girl who takes a nude photo of themselves in the bathroom mirror and sends it to their, uh, their boyfriend or no. girlfriend? Okay. No, that I, I, too. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, I don't know what to believe with people who, who, who intentionally go out and download it. I don't know. I think that, yeah, they, they should do jail time over there. I mean, you're, you're, you're violating children. I mean, they, when, they, when you have that happen to children, they're never, you know, <laughs> right, even into adulthood. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I guess my but, statement here, on it would idea. be, although sort of, um, there's. There's no victim that you can really point to in the sort of sharing of child pornography. Well, sure you can. But sure uh, hold, you on, can. hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, let's let's talk about that in a second. What I would say is, is I feel nothing. Like I feel no uh, remorse when these people go to jail. Like uh, if they they get caught up in the system, I don't feel bad. I don't lose any sleep over it. But there's no victim because it's like trading evidence of a crime, right? The crime was. The act of taking the photo or video, forcing a child into that situation, that's the crime. It's tantamount to essentially trading right. evidence of a crime like, you know, oh, I've got pictures of a murder, you know, crime scene or whatever. It shouldn't be legal to, to trade murder pictures. Right. Like what if, what if I'm going online and I'm investigating these uh, child pornographers, which many people do in their spare time? We had a guy call in earlier saying right. he's just talking about it. That. What if I end right. up right. with some evidence? Am I then a child pornographer? 
I mean, is, would you? Do right, you want, but here can be what, what I'm gonna, what, what I'm going to get into on this. I want to cover that real quick for the for the fact that I mean, we we what we do in the country can be we we engage in collateral damage. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar, Ian. You should remember like LimeWire, which have been a peer to peer sharing program, right? I, I recall the there, name. Yeah, I don't I remember know the name. Yeah. yeah, there had been a gentleman out in Ohio back, and I believe it had been 2005. The article came into my Libertarian feed a while ago, and he had he went to work, and before he went to work, he he activated LimeWire, and he began downloading, like, you know, you go into it, and you could download, pick which file you want to download. Mm -hmm. And he began downloading, loading like, 20 of them, and then went off to work. Well, 20 of 20, what? 20 porn, child porn or 20 No, not movies? child porn. They did, no, you could, remember, you could go on there, and you could download, like, a, like an album of Metallica, or okay. you could download a movie. Gotcha. Or you could download so pirated, you know, pirated he, content. Okay. Right, right. And it had been, like, 2005. They didn't crack down on it yet. And, um... He didn't know. A couple of them were child pornography. Oh. He technically downloaded child pornography. Well, they came in, they locked him up, and they got him to a jury trial, and they actually convicted him. Wow. And it hadn't, I believe it hadn't been until like 2010 that he actually got out on appeal. So are you he saying, just it, to be clear, that he downloaded like, let's say, Metallica, what he thought was a Metallica album, but it actually right. ended up being child pornography? Right. We have got to be very careful. We are becoming a country where we're like mob rule, where we, we, we do everything with, you know, when we make law, we do it very broad. Did he technically download child porn? Yeah, he did, but he didn't intend it. You know what I intent, mean? Yeah. And it, it, you, we're, we're doing away with the intent of law. And yeah, not, a a lot of, not all laws require intent for it to be a criminal act in some cases. I don't well, know. intent's hard to prove. That's yeah. the difficulty. And, and intent, to some extent, is the thought crime aspect. You know, if this is, uh, if this is bad, that's what sort of is the uh, argument that why the FBI, able, FBI should be able to do this is because they don't have the intent. They're not thinking prurient thoughts. But that nasty uh, neck beard that's uh, in his mom's basement downloading mm -hmm. he's thinking dirty thoughts so we need to lock him up right. and but that's the weird part here is is that i'm not uh, in it, favor of thought crimes yeah, I, I think, nor, I think, nor am i but i think that there's a you know it's important to, uh, for me it's about what is this a catalyst for much, more and worse and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't is basically the answer is if somebody just downloads child pornography and they never go out and do anything terrible um you know i guess that you know that's not the worst thing in the world, right? But if if it makes them sicker and sicker and sicker, and then they finally go out and do and something terrible, somebody. then I have a real problem with it. Yeah. So right. I hope that it will make people think, though, of the collateral damage for the fact that the government they only work in the collective. They don't, they, which should, you know, they shouldn't be working that way. They should be working on the individual. And if you're an individual and you didn't mean to do break a law, and here you're getting caught up in it. You know, I mean, that can be totally wrong. We should we shouldn't have that. But, I mean, what did they what did they talk about in the formation of the country that a hundred guilty men should go free before one non guilty man should be convicted? Absolutely, you know, it was I ten, mean, but yeah, I'll still right. agree I mean, at hundred to you one. You got to make sure that the people that that, that non guilty people. I mean, like with that gentleman, did he intend to download it? Well, no, but he technically did, and they tried to convict him of it. Thank God that the judge, you know, when he went to appeal, got him off on it. But really, you know. Doug, thanks for calling and sharing that with us tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Jordan is calling. He's listening on Discord. Uh, Jordan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian. Hey. How's it going? Good. You're on the air. I uh, just wanted to follow up with the other caller and a couple of other thoughts. Um, first off, I think pedophiles are disgusting. Um, if it was up to me, and thank God it's not up to me, um, you know, they would be out dead somewhere. But okay. regardless of the fact, um, you know, uh, with the FBI, I think it's definitely wrong that they're continuing those operations. Um, as you can see, what you mean, did. just for listeners but, just tuning in, you mean the operations where they take over child pornography distribution centers and continue to distribute child pornography for, in some cases, correct. months at a time? That That's what you're referring to? Yes, correct. Yeah. And, you know, they're technically, you know, could be true. Well, we know it's not going to happen. No. But, you know, cops don't arrest cops. So they're taking into that crime, and they're just perpetuating that crime even further. I'm not sure yeah, where you're yeah, going with this. Stand by, Jordan. We'll bring you back. Uh, let you wrap that up. Coming up in moments. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here. Bring up whatever you want. And I got to say, I, I was kind of surprised that people have actually called in tonight. 
to defend the FBI's distribution of... Only one person has. I thought it was two. But anyway, somebody called and uh, defended the FBI's distribution of unknown levels of uh, child pornography. We don't have the exact numbers on this new version of their under- undercover sting operation where they took over a kick and in Instagram account, uh, or maybe more than one, of a guy that they had arrested for child porn and then proceeded to preside over rooms that he was an admin of while a flurry of child pornography was passed around between the members over a, a I, year and a half. I have a question for the, with no charges. For the status, the ones that are still listening at this point. Um, if it is acceptable for the FBI to distribute child pornography in the name of catching the bad guys, and these are certainly bad guys. I mean, you know, it's hard hard to feel sorry for anybody who goes to jail for this stuff. But if uh, they they can do that, then what what thing could they do in the name of law and order that you would find unacceptable? I just don't know. I mean, if, if the distribution of child pornography isn't the thing that you say finally they have gone too far then what by god what could it possibly be let's go back to jordan listening us uh listening to us on our discord server there's actually a room on discord uh that plays most of the time as long as the robot isn't broken down every now and then it'll break down so it's not the most reliable way to listen but it's there on our discord server at discord.lrn.fm and jordan you're back on with us go ahead with your thoughts all right so um what I was saying before is, um, you know, the FBI also did a um, thing in the deep web, um, a whole big thing, and that included the Silk Road and all those other drug websites. And even with that, you see they, um, they were running that website for quite some time now um, before they actually decided to shut it down. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, what they're trying to do is, obtain evidence against users um you know i'm not defending the fbi i I think you know drug use is a victimless crime um but you know with the pedophile website i think they should take it down right away and you know definitely go after them Um, well because what you can say um, about drug the drug sales thing is that the fbi wasn't selling drugs but they were operating websites that where drugs were being sold. So you could draw a parallel there, but in those cases, you're talking about consenting individuals, somebody consenting to buy from a seller, whereas the argument with child pornography is that the person who was photographed or videoed wasn't consenting. Um, they were victimized, and then the argument is further that everybody who shares that image of the victimization is somehow victimizing that person further. I don't necessarily buy that claim, but that's the claim that is constantly made by the prosecutors, by the police. And so you have the federal agents themselves facilitating the passing around and maybe even sharing themselves. That wasn't made clear in this warrant from the FBI as to whether or not this undercover agent was actually sharing the images themselves or just administrating the rooms in which they were being shared. We know that the latter part's true, but we don't know whether or not the former uh, is Jordan? Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Your thoughts. Let's go to Joe listening via Global Star, which I suspect is uh, free to air satellite. Joe, where are you calling from? Michigan. You got us on uh, free to air satellite there in Michigan. Um, well, it's Global Star. I call in. I call in on my phone. Oh, okay, cool. And, uh, listen to some other talk, conservative talk shows. Interesting. Go ahead with um, your my, thoughts. Um, yeah, my thoughts are, you know, the government's out of control in just about every area. And, you know, they think that they're our masters, you know, instead of our servants. And I just don't understand it. As far as I'm concerned, the whole thing needs to be cleaned out and we need to start all over again. How about we but, just not start over again and forget about the federal government? <laughs> well, yeah, we really don't need them. Perfect. We just go back to states' rights. Exactly. I mean, but, it's bad enough having a state government. We definitely don't need a federal government that's even more disconnected, more humongous, more dangerous, and more insane uh, than all the local <laughs> state governments. Exactly. But my my question is, you know, if I remember correctly, the Constitution puts a, a high priority on property rights. And my question for you guys is, 
when did this whole notion of property taxes come in? Who started it? When did it start? Because Good question. if you look at it, if you look at it essentially, nobody owns anything in this country. That's I don't absolutely care about true. All those, yeah, a, I don't care about all those deeds that you sign when you buy a house right. and all that paperwork that you got to go through and everything. With a stroke of a pen, if you haven't paid your two grand or whatever it is, three grand in property taxes, uh, take it. It belongs to the government now. Yep. Right. So what you have is something to the effect of a. Uh, a, a lower level of ownership. They've got sovereign title to the uh, the land that you live on, and you've got this lesser sort of title to the land. Um, and it's but it's effectively rent, right? Um, right, it's, right, it's, exactly. You know, if you if you pay your rent on your house once every year, uh, twice a year, or whatever, um, that doesn't make it not rent. But um, you know, if they call it property tax, and you're allowed to do a few more things to the land, well. It's not that much different. Uh, I, I know a bit of the history of property taxes. Property taxes have been with uh, the United States since the very beginning. The uh, The term quit rents uh, was the uh, previous term, and that was the amount of sort of grain or the fruit of the land that you had to give the, uh, the Lord – uh, for a given piece of land. So, you know, they had the Lord's Castle or whatever, then the people were around it where they could run off to. Um, you know, this was true in the United States, too, except for the castle part. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, basically you had to give a piece of what you made off your land. It says here on uh, Wikipedia the Delaware had a, a tax not on property but from the income from it. So is that kind of what you're talking about, whether it's food that was grown on it or right. money that you made off of it? Yes, so um, effectively, well, I, I can kind of, for a long time. I can, kind of, I can kind of see that, but how can it get to the point where they just take the land and kick you off of it? You know, that that just doesn't ring. Because it's theirs. Because uh, they're a criminal gang. Because they're a criminal enterprise, and they're the only criminal enterprise that has ever been so successful at uh, convincing people that there's something besides that. That there's some right. sort of they tell organization you, of legitimacy. There's no way for this to function without us owning the land and a sovereign title. That's really what they say. They keep saying it over and over again, and people tend to believe it. Well, we can't live without government, they'll say. But just because this, we have, we have this type of government, and it's pretty ubiquitous around the world, uh, this particular type, well, that well, doesn't mean that we can't get it, have a better one with more freedoms and better customer service. So when you go back to the beginning, then, so there's a distinction between somewhere along the line they decided that they can take your land, whereas before they could just take of your of your the work of your labor of your fruit of your labors. No, if you didn't give the fruit of the labors, they take it. To, they would they would certainly kick you off. A serf was bound to the land, uh, so oh. you know out you go. They they could very they probably just pillory you, pillory you to death. Well, you know, just just as an historical point. Um, Israel, the state of uh, when God founded the state of Israel, but way back in the day, okay. and He gave the tribes their land. Uh-huh. They they could their land could not be taken from them from anybody for any reason. Well, that's you know, so at least God got it right. Joe, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Back I wish the, God would write my deed then. Back to the Forbes story on the FBI running uh, child pornography distribution rings. The sting operations, they say, are a double-edged sword. They can successfully help cops catch abusers. In theory, they haven't from this particular 18-month-long investigation. And those who share exploitation imagery and video and at the same time permit the re-victimization of anyone featured in the material. In the Utah operation, it appeared, quote, anywhere from hundreds to thousands of children were re-victimized as means to the government's investigative ends, according to Adam Elwa, an associate with the law office of Zachary Margulis Anuma, a New York-based law firm that has defended those accused of child pornography charges. Hansen, that was the person the FBI arrested and took over, uh, created multiple kit groups for the trading of child abuse material and banned those who weren't contributing. Meaning if you join the group and you don't put something into the group, you get kicked out. Uh, according to the search warrant, hundreds of kick users within those groups were seen sharing images and my, uh, videos of minor boys, quote, in various stages of undress in sexually explicit positions and, quote, engaging in sexual activity with adults or children. And then they give an excerpt from the actual uh, paperwork. 
Distributing images of children being sexually abused violates their privacy and puts them at risk of being harmed again, said John Carr, a consultant who works for Microsoft or worked for Microsoft and the UK government on child exploitation and Internet safety. He says abused children should not be used as bait. There's, well, I, I, I have to agree. There's more coming up here. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. More on the government distributing child pornography or facilitating at the very minimum the distribution of countless amounts of it over 18 months. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Is spreading the message of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace around the globe worth $2 per month to you? As you may already know, in addition to our internet feed, LRN.FM broadcasts on free-to-air satellite across North and Central America, as well as Sub-Saharan Africa. And we've been available on satellite for free 24-7 since 2010. The LRN.FM free-to-air satellite signal is reaching some of the most oppressive regimes in the world, and there's no doubt our ideas are making an impact. You can learn more about the channel's impact by watching the three-minute video at fund.lrn.fm. If you'd like to help free minds globally with our ideas of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace, you can donate as little as $2 per month via fund.lrn.fm. You can help us continue and expand our satellite broadcast to multiple continents. Visit fund.lrn.fm today, and thank you for your help. Don't forget to share the link on social media. That's fund.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour here on the live Saturday edition of the program. Our toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Our Discord on-air call-in line rooms are discord.lrn.fm. Just drop in to one of those. We'll get you on the air, and you'll sound almost like you're sitting here in the studio if you're on Discord. Uh, We like that. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Mark. We go to your phone calls and thoughts. If you're just tuning in, the main story we've been covering tonight and just kind of been coming back to it is uh, an exclusive uh, by Forbes. And they've uh, gotten evidence of the federal government taking over the kick and Instagram accounts of a child porn distributor that they busted this person. Then they got him to sign over access to his accounts. They then got into the accounts found out that he was administrating, or maybe they already knew this, but he was administrating multiple Took rooms. over administration. Right. He was the administrator of multiple child porn distribution rings or rooms or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they just continued to operate those rooms, acting as though they were this person for at least 18 months, according to the affidavits. Right. And they could have, at any point, demanded the IP addresses of certain users from uh, the platform. Sure. According to the platform, they have not been contacted. Didn't know that investigation was even going on, according to Kick. So let's, let's go to your calls and thoughts. There's a little bit more here from the story at Forbes. And then if we get the chance, we can talk about International Women's Day. I think you wanted to comment on that, Mark. We'll get into it. But first, Matt, on YouTube, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matt. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad y'all brought this show up because I was going to bring it up in relation to a call y'all had yesterday. Uh, two calls. Well, you had one from a 13-year-old boy who wanted to talk about the traumas of moving from uh, upstate New York to Houston, Texas. And, you know, I, I've been there. I moved from Japan to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. Boy, that was a culture shock. Mm. Uh, and then there's some guy called up and said, you know, you were talking to a 13-year-old boy and he used his name and somebody might track him down. And I'm thinking to myself... <laughs> What is going on? I mean, first this thing about Michael Jackson becomes a whole big documentary. Everybody's like, yeah. we always suspected this about Michael Jackson. And I'm like, yeah, but you never proved it. And then this trial of R. Kelly, and these are things that so are wait, going are, Just on, to be clear, like, are you one of the Michael Jackson uh, is innocent people? I don't know. Okay. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people who are telling a very similar story about him. Now, maybe they all coordinated and said, we want to get this guy or whatever reason. But uh, from what I understand, and I did not watch the documentary, but I read a, a review of it online. And it's 
Sounds like, you know, the evidence is pretty persuasive about what the, you know, the, the, he's paying off the parents, giving them, uh, you know, free houses and cars and uh, private jet flights or whatever. Yeah, and, that, that in and of itself is enough for me. Like, okay, I want to well, hang out with your son, so I'm going to give you a bunch of free stuff. And that he would even weird. keep the parents in the same house while he was in the bed with their son. Uh, well, oh, in right. his bed with the parents' son. Well, the parents Believe were in another me, room. The, the, it is disturbing, but um, you know, history also has convicted Vlad the Impaler as a vampire. Okay. So, uh, not that he was a nice guy, <laughs> but all right. What was your? Uh, what he, were you driving at here? I just seeing them lately. Like you're seeing being bombarded with all of this stuff about pedophilia, and I'm wondering. Is there some kind of a plague going on, or is this just one of those things moving through the zeitgeist? Yeah, it seems to be. Probably the latter. Because a lot of this stuff happened a long time ago. You know, Jackson's been dead for a decade. They're they're going, uh, they're trying uh, R. Kelly, who's some kind of an R.B.'s thing, about incidents that happened a long time ago, and suddenly all these women who, you know, are suddenly coming forward and saying that they were traumatized a long time ago, but chose to say nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a mind reader. So the claim the that I actually saw this? in a couple of the articles about both Michael Jackson and R. Kelly, the claim about why it takes some people so long to come out was that they um, came out basically after they had children. So until then, they like didn't realize how it, how seriously you know messed up was that whatever it was that happened to them allegedly until they had kids and then that apparently they say helped them realize how vulnerable they were at the time um was one of the claims about that okay i guess i'll have to take their word on it because like i said i don't read mine so i'm just wondering it's just strange the claim with michael jackson was that he had told the kids that they would go to prison if they ever said anything about what happened so there may be some manipulation going on on they're children. <laughs> I mean, they might have. Well, you're talking okay. about one of the more powerful people in the world at that point, too. Yeah, I one mean, of the one of the alleged abuse victims said that he felt like he was, you know, hanging out with God, basically. Right. You're going to be, uh, you know, you're, you're you're whisked away on the private jet, uh, put inside of a mansion where you can't even find the exit, and uh, you know, you're sleeping with this guy, and uh, pretty soon he's, you know, creepy touching you or whatever after he's giving you the Jesus juice, uh, which is what he called wine. Is that right? Yeah, um, it's yeah. it just keeps going. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it ain't pretty. Yeah, I I don't know. This this whole thing is just really weird, and somehow, you know, I always get this feeling whenever I see these moral panics, nothing ever, nothing good ever comes. I'm with it. you. Yeah, you should be skeptical when you know when there's a whole when you see a pattern and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Sure, be skeptical. You should always be skeptical, but don't ever be so skeptical that you can't be convinced. That's not what that's not what skepticism is. Matt, thanks right, for the call right. tonight, man. I, I appreciate right. hearing from you. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Yeah, I just it doesn't. I guess it to me, uh, rich people basically can get whatever they want to have, you know, which means that they then can explore um, new wants, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, once once you get the basics uh, filled up, then you can start looking at uh, you know new different things to explore and uh, that you might want. So that's why I kind of um, you know I, I feel like I'm more quick to indict somebody who's very wealthy, very powerful on these uh, sexual predatory charges. Uh, but you know, who knows? He did admit sleeping with boys. I mean, yes. that that is you know fact. Right. And I just like to have little campouts with boys. People who worked for him, like maids and such, said that in the house they had like a bedroom attached to basically every room. So I guess the idea was you wouldn't have to go far if you wanted to get to a bedroom. That's kind of the idea, <laughs> as I understand it. Uh, the government, though, according to the story over at Forbes about the FBI taking over government goons, porn. Yeah, thank you, government <laughs> goons, uh, taking over pornography distribution rings and just continuing to operate them for 18 months, 
believes that taking control of suspects' online personas is sometimes worth it. In two previous public cases, both looking into child abuse material crimes, police presented suspects with consent to assume online identity forms. In 2008, investigators took control of a suspect's Yahoo account, and in 2009, the FBI acquired access to a real user account on a peer-to-peer file-sharing service. The most controversial facilitation of child pornography, oh, by the way, Forbes couldn't find any court documents showing how the police benefited from this access. Right. And no, they did it. That's that's the thing here is, is that, okay, perhaps you can convince me that uh, taking over a child distribution, child porn distribution room is worth it from a police standpoint, but shouldn't you have some arrests mm-hmm. that are associated in some way? They don't have that with this recent case. Well, Forbes certainly couldn't find the, uh, the the association. Right. The most controversial facilitation of child pornography occurred in February of 2015 when the Department of Justice seized and ran Playpen. The site was hosted on Tor, widely known as the dark web, where users' identities are obscured, allegedly, by layers of encryption. For two weeks, police launched a malicious code at visitors that would attempt to uncloak their IP address and subsequently their identity. But over that fortnight, the website's performance improved and membership increased 30%. So apparently, the giving it to the it feds actually was an upgrade. Before, yeah, right yeah. now, now it's being run on their computers. Put it on it's some working. good servers with some bandwidth. Right. Well, in that case, at the very least, they were trying to find these people. We don't have any evidence of any other of the circumstances where they're running this stuff that they're even trying. The uh, let's see, they found the administrator of Playpen, Stephen Chase. According to his counsel, he was eventually sentenced to thirty years for six counts related to the sharing and advertisement of child abuse content. By its own admission, the FBI said 9,000 images and 200 videos were made available by Playpen users while it operated the site, but they didn't tell you how many times those images were downloaded. And if I recall correctly, it was in the hundreds Hundreds of thousands. thousands, Uh, More coming up. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. We invite you to join us here. The toll-free number for you to take control of the airwaves is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450-3733. Four five zero three seven three three. Ian and Mark here in the studio tonight, and we've also got the Discord on air call in line rooms open and available to you over at discord.lrn.fm. If you operate a re- retail business, like a real life brick and mortar kind of business, and you want to take cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Dash or Zcash or some others, get on over to helpmetakebitcoin.com. The folks at AnyPay can help make this possible for you and do it within moments. If you've ever signed up for a, you know, credit card processing or a bank account, you know how difficult it can be to open up those old money services. Getting started with Bitcoin is way easier than you think and I'm really really talking about 15 minutes here is probably what you would need. If you if you've never downloaded a Bitcoin wallet, that's going to be probably the biggest chunk of time is just getting your wallet set up for the first time. Anyway, go to HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com. This is easy to do, and they've made it real streamlined over there. HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts as the federal government once again has been caught. Now, they may be doing this on a a variety of other occasions. Who knows how often this is going on, but this is the first time on record, according to Forbes magazine, the first time the federal government or maybe any policing agency has taken over Uh, the private accounts of a person who was convicted or busted for child pornography and then proceeded to then operate that person's rooms in which they were trading. So it was an administrator operating their rooms in which people were trading child pornography for 18 months at least in this particular case. And some people out there, I think rightfully, should find this unacceptable and outrageous, the idea that the federal government who claims that it is a crime to distribute child pornography, are engaging in the distribution of child pornography and the facilitation of the distribution of child pornography for weeks upon end, in this case, months well, upon end. Well, they simultaneously that the distribution of this stuff is damaging to the victims and then claim, but not when we do not it. Not when we do it. And that's like... <laughs> it's that's ridiculous. The, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it either is damaging or it's, or it's not, not damaging. Right. It's either... It should either be a crime or it should not be a crime. No, no. Being a police officer doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. And this is wrong and it should not be done in the name of right. Yeah, I'm on the side of it's not... It should not be a crime uh, to, you know, 
facilitate or to distribute these things, to download it, but to create it is, to my mind, the crime because that's where the person was victimized. You know, whether or not one or 400,000 people see that photograph right. is it's, immaterial to the victim. The, the damaging thing occurred um, at that moment. I'm, I'm with you on that. I, um, it's not like they get a little zap every time somebody downloads it. Right, I, I concur yeah. with that. However, what I would say is, is that um, it's I, – I don't want the society where the, uh, the distribution of this stuff is okay so long as we got, we got the person who did it. Um, you know, I, just, I just don't want that. Well, Thanks. I don't want a society where people are thrown in prison for a thought crime, which is ultimately what you're talking about. I'm not talking about necessarily a thought crime because in this circumstance, what we're saying um, is is that I'm saying I'm being consistent. The distribution of this stuff is bad. And whether you're a cop, whether you're a child mm-hmm. to trying to ch- catch a child predator or you know whatever it is, if you distribute this stuff, you're doing something bad. But I, where's the victim? Uh, I understand. You're you're, you're asking. Where you're the saying is. morally, it's it's bad. No, I'm I'm saying from a uh, you know to some extent, what we're talking about here is constructing a society. Mm-hmm. And in the construction of a society, I don't think we want we we don't we don't have the guts for that. All right, and I don't want to. I don't want to go in the place where it's okay. We got the bad guy who made it, so let's just distribute the heck out of it. I I, mm-hmm. I, I you know I'm not ready to uh, to to make that defense. Not interested in it. You're right. There's no actual victim in that circumstance. However, um, let's you know let's let's go after the largest distributors, and right now the largest distributors is the FBI. Let's go to Jim. He's listening in Indianapolis to WIBC FM. Hello, Jim. Hello. Hey. I don't really have a, a strong opinion yet about the FBI's what they did because I, I would like to get a little more information. Than just what would you like to head. know? We know a little bit about well, the case. I read the story. Well, I, I, well no, I, 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 I want to get different uh, views of it from different um, journalists. Um, well, journalists so I don't think aren't I can supposed be an to express a view. Everything by hearing one one thing about it. Agreed. But but I but I would like to say this: America tends to be in denial about these type of things. For instance. They were showing the Cosby show until the guy finally went to jail, even though multiple women accused him of being probably the biggest serial rapist in American history. But we still got Jim Baker, who did exactly what uh, Bill Cosby did, was to give his you know secretary a date rape drug and then gang rape her with a friend of his. And he's still teaching us how to be moral on TV, how to live moral lives. What a joke. Yeah, I always wonder. Um, I mean, I feel like Bill Cosby's work on the Cosby Show was quite good. Um, but you know, am I supposed to change my opinion about it because the man who portrayed, uh, you know, Huxley, character, yeah, is is not the man that uh, that we thought he was? Um, well, 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 how far do you have to go? Should we? I mean, if if Adolf Hitler had a had a sitcom back in those days, <laughs> would we now be watching it? I mean, how, how far does it have to go? Good question. The guy's a horrible rapist. He's a phony. He is. And we uh, shouldn't be watching a show. They shouldn't be showing it to us. Well, R- R- Adolf Hitler was an artist, and he painted some paintings, and those right, paintings right. are worth but money. People tend to, and no, let me they're ask not, you. They're not, people, people don't tend to like things like that. They don't bring big money, actually. Well, they're not I Picasso. You've got, you got a few weirdos that are into, like, Nazi stuff, but other than that, that stuff doesn't bring big money because people don't – they tend to sh- well, I said shy it, away from I evil said it brought people. money, and um, they certainly are going to bring – they're going to bring more than if you paint a, a scene on the street. Um, they, they've they got the acclaim. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't have much of an opinion on I, – I think it's strange to want to buy Adolf Hitler's paintings because there's – they're inconsequential and not very uh, – they're not special in any way other than, you know, the fact that, you know, he was – Well, don't you think it's a little odd that Bill Cosby fired Lisa Bonet because she got pregnant and while at the same time he's raping women? The show is a, is a, is a show about a nice guy, whereas he's exactly the opposite of that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it was a tough situation uh, for a lot of people with uh, Bill Cosby, who had grown up, you know, in my case, I, I remember watching him as a kid. America's the, dad, right? 1980s. Uh, he was right. the reading Rainbow, not reading Rainbow, Ch- Picture Pages. That was what he did, the Picture Pages thing on Nickelodeon, hugely popular uh, thing for kids. And, uh, you know, not everybody's who they seem to be, I guess. I, I tend to agree with you on this, Mark. I, 
I don't think people should allow their opinion of the man to affect whether or not they enjoyed the programs that were put out. That I'm going to feel well, bad everybody's about it. Got, everybody's got the right to watch it or not, but yeah. the people that are providing it, I don't, I don't think they should be doing it. You're saying and the TV stations be, the should, advertisers should ban shouldn't it. Be, uh, shouldn't be advertising on the channel. So all the other it. actors that were in the show, they should just get you know thrown to the the, the floor, the cutting no, room floor. They didn't do anything wrong. Well, I mean, should I, I? I would imagine that Bill Cosby's estate is going to be sued. Um, so, you know, if you watch the show, the estate gets money, and then the people that are going to sue the state uh, can get some money. I hey, guess. Uh, Jim, thanks for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. More on the government running child porn rings, apparently. And we don't know how much porn was distributed, but we know it was a long time they were running them. We're coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Some of you asked, and now we've delivered. LRN.FM's live Keene, New Hampshire studio shows are now streamed in HD on Twitch. Visit our channel at twitch.lrn.fm and give it a follow. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription on Twitch. If you use it on our channel, Twitch will give LRN.FM a monthly piece of your Prime subscription cost. So please watch, follow, share, and subscribe to twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial in toll free and bring up anything you want if you want. Our number is 855 450 free like freedom. That's 855 450 3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian and Mark. And of course, you can visit our website and follow us on social media. We've got a variety of uh, different options. There's the Free Talk Live Twitter at twitter.freetalklive.com. There is the alternative to Twitter. The decentralized alternative called Mastodon. You can go and follow us on that platform by going to toot.freetalklive.com. That's T-O-O-T, toot.freetalklive.com. Or our Telegram channel at telegram.freetalklive.com. So we continue. We'll take your calls and thoughts. Marilyn is on the line in, I'm not sure where, New Hampshire? Marilyn, where are you tonight? Yes, New Hampshire. Welcome. What part of New Hampshire are you in? Uh, Lake Winnipesaukee. Excellent. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Well, I wanted to comment on the uh, child pornography. Um, yeah. It's a behavioral crime. And it's a, it's a medium that is very powerful. And I wanted to explain that to you. Um, I, I was a fighter of pornography back in the 70s. All pornography? Yeah, for, you know, on women. When and you say you were I a found fighter. Out the hard way by getting involved with protesting it, and that the women that uh, were fighting it were lesbians, and I was straight. And I found out that um, they learned that even women who were looking at pornography just to fight it, you know, like I blocked it out, I didn't look at the stuff. How but is it that, women, just to clarify, I, this is it, news to me. They would become lesbians. That's how powerful it is. It's okay. true. Yes, this is true. It's ridiculous is I what it is. I just decided, you know, I'm getting out of this. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to okay. have any part Hold of Hold on. It. Marilyn, I want to know what it is that you did to fight pornography and how it is that watching pornography helps you fight pornography. Well, what they were doing was they would have... Um, you know, like group meetings, and um, uh, they would gather the pornography and burn it. Really? They also but in take the meanwhile, and stuff? Like, these women were collecting it, and they, in other words, the lesbians knew that if they collected it, you know, if they were going to be looking at it, and and it did turn women into lesbians, so they didn't tell them that that's now, what they going to do. But that was how part you, of their routine. How do you know that watching pornography turns straight women into lesbians? Because that's what the lesbians told me, and I I observed it, and I got out of it. I didn't observe how many the pornography, told you but that? I observed what other women were doing. How how many lesbians told you that it was because they watched pornography is why they believe they are attracted to women? Because I've never heard this before well, in my life. They don't life. tell you. You just observe. I thought you said they told you. You're involved Didn't with the group. Didn't she just say? 
She did Pardon just me. say, right, Mark? You're nodding your head. Yes, that doesn't yes, help. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you, you know, did in other just words, say. I was part of this group of women. Yes, that's what you said. And, you know, in a short period of time, I learned who they were and what they were doing. And okay. several of them were straight at one time and became lesbians. So they didn't tell me why, but then I found out because that they're the hanging leader out with told lesbians. me. Uh, the mean, leader of the group told me this is what was going on. Sh- hold on. What did the leader tell you exactly? That when women are gathering the pornography to fight it, <laughs> they would be looking at it, and they would become lesbians. How long does it take? I mean, is it is, is it for— <laughs> I'm like... sorry. I didn't hang around long enough to find out. Right. I got out. She didn't want to become a lesbian. Yeah, the, but, the magic know, spell hadn't been passed I'm just on you. Repeating what I heard. Do you think there's something her. wrong with being a lesbian? <sighs> is there is there something wrong with being a child pornographer? Are you really going to uh-huh. try to draw that parallel? It's, not, it's just not correct behavior at all. Okay, so, so anyway, you are basically uh, a homophobe. My question to you is: you, you were mentioning about the 18 Crazy months. Homophobe. When was this 18 months? The, uh, during the uh, what were Obama the dates? administration? Uh, 20, no, actually during Trump. So 2017 yeah. through 20, early 2017 through late uh, 2018, basically. And April through these November. employees who were involved, were they hired by, you know, were they holdovers from the Obama administration? Well, they're FBI no, agents. They could have brought, been hired um, at any point. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up. If your theory is true. Then wouldn't they should that, all be lesbians, right? Wouldn't all the uh, employees of the FBI who are involved in investigating child pornography become either lesbians, gay men, or child pornographers no, 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 themselves? No, they become child pornographers. Oh, so porn- they get, in other words, they they get the addiction. They get addicted to what they're viewing. And this is all what the person who led the anti-porn group in the 1970s told you, and you've believed that ever since. Yes, I observed it. Well, I, there's a lot of people. Pornography is that you did not observe powerful, that happen. depending and no, on it's the, not. the type of pornography yeah. that you are viewing. No. I blocked it out. I didn't look at it. Marilyn, I've got but news you for you. It, you are, you are uh, completely paranoid, and you're totally wrong about this. Now, you could argue that pornography has an addictive uh, feature, meaning that people can get hooked on it, sure. uh, just like people can get hooked on, you know, eating ice cream or other habits that might be bad, you know, in not in moderation. Uh, so certainly there are people who have addictions to pornography of all sorts, no doubt about it. But the and, consumption of pornography does not yeah. lead to the consumption of child <laughs> pornography. <laughs> no. Well, nor does the consumption of uh, child porn make one into a child pornographer, nor does the consumption of any porn make one into a lesbian. Uh, or a gay person. So, I mean, this is just the most ridiculous theory I've ever heard. Well, Every person who's gay that I have ever spoken with has known they were gay from a relatively young age. It's something that they were just, and they hadn't seen a bunch of hardcore porn. Uh, they just grew up with an attraction to the same sex. Now, some people hit it for longer than others, but over time, Many of them have come to the realization of that they are attracted to the same sex, and they've embraced that publicly to some extent, come out of the closet, and probably have a better life uh, because they're not hiding themselves anymore. Right. But it has nothing to do with watching porn. Well, I I think that uh, the idea of gay and straight is a little antiquated anyway. Um, I mean, basically, there's a Kinsey scale out there, and that Kinsey scale says that, you know, I think you're at a zero, you're Mm -hmm. uh, gay or or straight, um, and then at a seven, you're gay or straight. Yeah, one or the other. It it goes one way or the other. I'm not sure what it is. I don't don't care. The argument is almost everybody's in between somewhere. Is that right? Well, uh, no. I mean, nope. you know, there are people that on um, you know that, that are on one end or the other. But okay. if you're if you're somehow like I'm thinking, maybe she, she certainly likely did see some straight women turn into lesbians. <laughs> it's however she's assigning the reasoning here, and it could be just because they're hanging out with lesbians and seeing an opportunity to do lesbian things, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess a straight woman who is, you well, know, straight could she experiment. She presumed they were straight because they were married or something. This is the yeah. 70s, okay? Right. right, I mean, you know. They were probably women who were lesbians who were married because they hadn't come out as being lesbians, right? Sure, they didn't have the saying? opportunities or anything like yeah. that. The opportunity presents itself. They avail right. themselves of the opportunity. They get rid of that bum at the house. They um, didn't have a lesbo app that they could log into and, right. you know, find other lesbians. Right. What's the lesbo app? I don't know. What? Are, I'd be, I'm sorry. There's a grinder for I, the gay I'm guys. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to use the term lesbo. 
<laughs> like that's not. This is not. You're you're not in is the that a so- bad word? social group that allows you to say lesbo. <laughs> I just said it. Yeah, I, I I know. You'll say whatever you want to say, just because you want to be able to say whatever you want to say. Marilyn, fascinating call. Thank you for making it tonight. Um, wow, you know that's. I thought I'd heard it heard it all, but no. I mean, people assign porn. all kinds of things. You know, once they uh, they they decide that pornography is a sin, right? And then mm-hmm. once they've decided that, then there's a bunch of other things that they kind of pile on to the the whole thing. After that, well, you know, it'll lead to this, it'll lead to that, damnation, and the whole uh, rigmarole. Uh, you know, I mean, yes, some people become uh, addicted to pornography. Mm-hmm. However. It doesn't affect everybody. It certainly doesn't affect everybody the same way. It's just pictures. Okay. Right. Moving pictures. Pictures of yep. naked people. Uh, the toll free number here tonight, 855 450 free. We've got time for you if you want to join us in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are imminent. It's Ian and Mark here. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. The live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, 855 450 3733. Don't forget, we've got a forum where you can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners over at forum.freetalklive.com and more coming up on the radio. It's Free Talk Live. Open phones, as always, where you can take control of the airwaves. Our number, 855-450-FREE-LIKE FREEDOM. It's 855-450-3733. We've also got the Discord on-air call-in line rooms, where we've got somebody hanging on the line. We're going to get to just here in a moment, but you can get on to those rooms over at Discord. Dot LRN dot FM. And thank you to Joe, who is a Free Talk Live gold amplifier. A gold means Joe's doing $10 a month. We only ask for five, but he's doing 10 We really appreciate anybody uh, contributing to the AMP program. But thank you, Joe, for that, because the AMP program helps us advertise, market, and promote Free Talk Live so we can get on more radio stations around the country and bring new Internet listeners on board to the show, exposing new people to the ideas of freedom and uh, continuing this conversation that we keep having on a variety of different issues here on the air. So if you want to help us do that, please join the AMP program like Joe did over at amp.freetalklive.com, ampamp.freetalklive.com. As we go back to the phones, to the fun, Russ listening to WLNI-FM in Lynchburg, Virginia. Hey, Russ. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome. You're on the air. Uh, Okay. Um, You know, the last caller just completely blew my mind. Um, (laughs) What kind of sheep? Is she? I mean, that is one of the most misguided people I've ever seen, heard on your show in my life. Sounded like a religious but zealot to me, but we didn't get deep into what her belief systems were. I, I'm not worried about the belief system. I'm talking about the whole thing that that, that watching pornography will turn a woman into a lesbian. Right, but that, what I'm saying is, I think that, that probably comes from a religious kind belief. Of a, it, kind of a thing. <laughs> Sorry, you're still um, there. Go ahead. Anyway, um, anyway. Let me, uh-huh. Let me uh, digress again. Um, you know, we're talking about the whole child pornography thing with the FBI. Yeah. Um, they're committing a crime to fight crime, and basically what they're doing is entrapment. I don't support the whole anyone ordering or owning or creating child pornography, but I don't think our government needs to distribute it. Okay. You know. Seems like a reasonable anyway, position. Um, yeah, and I mean it's 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 a very you know it, it's a very 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 controversial subject. But along those lines, I mean we've we've had a few things pop up in the fa- past five to six years with you know the whole Cosby issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we have R. Kelly, um, you know Harvey Weinstein, and I really it's funny that R. Kelly was in jail. Um, Bill Cosby has gone to prison. And Harvey Weinstein is walking around free. Yeah. And to be honest with you, he's probably done more damage to uh, in Hollywood than anyone I can think of. I haven't looked and closely they, at the Harvey I Weinstein mean, stuff, but I mean, didn't wasn't it basically a pay to play kind of situation with uh, Weinstein? It, it was a casting couch for a situation, but he basically ra- raped Rose McGowan. Okay, and basically that's raped the one that, that for me, you know, she hasn't come out to earn money off of this. She's what are the allegations for, in that case? There were so many allegations thrown around. I don't remember who uh, said what. He, he raped her. I mean, he's done this. I mean, I mean, we just had Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie come out and say he raped them. So, I okay. mean, it's pretty much been prevalent for the past 40 years with this guy. 
Well, my thing is, is I just uh, there was a director recently who, and this was a Facebook post. And I, I just like to cla- I just like to clarify Mitchell. something. I don't want to sound like I'm defending Harvey Weinstein. I don't know what the guy did. I don't. There's nothing's been proven uh, at this point. Uh, you it's know, guys, it's he said versus information on you know all the legit news services out there. There um, are. I just don't pay attention. It's, to it's it. a pile on. I mean, there's no doubt that there's a pile on. We read many of the allegations on the air. It usually involved him being yeah, in his insane, hotel yeah. room. He would invite up one of these girls. He wanted um, a back rub. Or I mean, whatever yeah, it was he wanted. Know, there is a two. There is a two two sides to this. He there had a bo- had a bottle of wine. There's also the fact that they're trying to further their career. Right, and so that's what so, I'm saying. Well, that's you know. that's part of the pro- the issue here is, right. is that when you have uh, twenty yeah. beautiful women whose job it is in some cases to get buck naked and simulate sex yep. on um, on the you know the big screen there, uh, you know one of them or two of them is going to try to stand out amongst the others. Well, and then how are right, they going to do yeah. that? Well, the casting couch well, is an we'll, option. Yeah, let let me let me step in here and and just you know, there's a, like I said, there's a director. I'm I'm actually friends with a guy on Facebook. Talk to him daily, Marcus Nispel. Okay, he has done some decent movies, uh, Conan the Barbarian, Friday the Thirteenth, the remakes. Uh-huh. Um, and he basically went off on a in, on a on a post one day and basically, you know, you know, he didn't expose anything, but he was ranting about this. And I mean, with with all all due you know, all the righteousness in it because the guy was right. There is in Hollywood, in the entertainment industry, you know, an underground, you know, I don't, you know, it's not some sort of evil multi tentacle or, you know, cabal. Spit it out. What is it's it? It's just the fact that there's just too much. There's just way too much abuse of power in Hollywood. Hmm. Well, I mean, power is going I mean, to be abused R. generally. R. Kelly, those allegations for R. Kelly have been around since at least 15 years. At least. I mean, I think and it's closer Michael to 25. Jackson. Okay, Michael Jackson. Let's go back to Michael Jackson, okay? Michael Jackson had allegations thrown at him when he was still alive and performing yep. in the 80s. Yep. I mean, when you're raised by Joe Jackson and what he did with, with his daughters, there you go. I don't know that's an allegation, sorry. It's a vicious cycle. Um, Are you with, saying that his dad you know, molested his daughters? Other, I'm not familiar I'll, I'll with that. I'll give you a perfect example. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey came out after se- after sexually abusing or attempting to sexually abuse a young actor underage and said he's gay. The gay community backed away and said they're no, they don't want anything to do with this man. Well, right, because being you know, gay doesn't like, mean that you're a like molester. We have people that, who are identifying as pedosexual. This may be a created term, but it's been on the Internet enough to where it's now – in, in the in the public consciousness, they want to. They I've wanna, never heard of it. They want to justify having sex with kids. Frankly, it disgusts me. It's not a sexual identity; it's a mental illness, and they need to be treated as such. Okay. Institutionalized or thrown in prison for the rest of their life. That's pretty much it. I'm not sure that's a solution to it, but um, you know, I. I well, that... you know the you know I will say this much. Um, what was it? We mentioned someone mentioned Hitler. You know, some of those dictatorial, you know, um, forms of government did have a way of dealing with these people. They basically shot them in the back of the head. It didn't matter if they were, you know, and left them. Um, I don't know if that should be the solution, but you know what? Probably not, because when they don't like you, they'll call yeah, you They'll the call, call you a pedophile. They'll shoot you in the back of the head, and off you go into a yeah, ditch. Yeah, no evidence necessary. You know, as, far as, as far as what that, that piece of garbage did in World War II to six million Jews— homosexuals, mentally ill, you know. But you're willing to embrace his methods if, uh, you know, you think it'll further your methods. Thank you for the call tonight. Uh, further your goals. Thanks for uh, for that. The toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's continue here with uh, Outlaw Conservative on our Discord chat. Good to be with you guys. Hello. This is uh, Chris. Sounds like Chris Cantwell. Hello there. Indeed, it is. Yes, my name is Christopher Cantwell. I'm the house of the host of the Outlaw Conservative and a bunch of other terrible things, which we probably shouldn't talk about on broadcast radio. But I, I just uh, I tuned in uh, towards the end of the show and I heard the woman talking about pornography turning women into lesbians, and you guys seemed all confused by that. And I figured I'd call and explain to you why she's right. Um, <laughs> so. 
Uh, and so it's not to say, and it's not to say that all women. You're going to align yourself with the religious nut job zealots tonight. All right. Hashtag not well, all women. All right. Go ahead. But this is the whole thing. You know, this is the problem. This is the problem. When we start talking about issues like that, it always gets distracted with the with the religion thing, which it really isn't, right? But it is interesting to to see, like, because uh, I, I used to make that assumption myself. I used to think that, like. All insistence on any kind of like sexual norm was just some kind of like throwback to some religious superstition. And it's really not when you start. Um, it's unfortunate we're so short on time because we're not going to be able to do this justice. But well, how does it turn know. them into lesbians? That's what I want. What, what it does is it disconnects sex from reproduction for one. OK, so like it, it, the entire, you know, the, the entire pornography industry is just the same deconstruction that you see run rampant with the ethnic group that's controlling the pornography industry, which you probably know is the same ethnic group that's responsible for the banking and the media. Right. They deconstruct everything. They say, but, oh, but are they shape shifting lizards? <laughs> sex is about pleasure. Right. It's a nonsense lie that's been peddled upon the society. Right? That's, that's what and it's then, about for me. Gets, Everybody yep. gets it in their head. Well, of course it is for you, right? Because you got conned into this nonsense when you were how young and 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 did away with your. I've just never had. This, right? I've just never had the drive to reproduce. It's never been well, something for me, well, man. It's been for you, you know, but not but, for but me. Been, but you know, the the thing is that you know whatever your drives are, Ian, are, they're influenced by the information that you're given, right? And so, like the our entire information pool is flooded with this nonsense and then you get filled with this nonsense in your head and then you go repeat it on the airwaves and it just continues until there's like until our birth rates plummet and they have to re replace us with third world immigrants right so that's exactly what's our happening birth rates i am <laughs> yeah. out of time for tonight that's uh, the outlaw conservative uh, what's your website chris Outlawconservative.com. Chris you're going to be you're going to be on. Uh, you have a lot of despicable views, but you're going to be able to express them on a special episode of special extra extra despicable episode. of Aria Demenza, the anarchist shemale versus Christopher Cantwell, the outlaw conservative slash crying Nazi, as he's been called. That's going to be happening Friday night on the uh, Twitch feed, Twitch.lrn.fm, at least until Twitch pulls it off because Chris is violating their uh, their terms of service. So that's going to happen 10 p.m. Eastern Time Friday. Mark your calendar and be there at twitch.lrn.fm to see that happen live. It'll also be on our lrn.fm streams. Meanwhile, we'll see you tomorrow. Free talk. All right, another edition of the Edgington Post Show. Mark Edge coming to you from the North American Bitcoin Conference reporting for Free Talk Live. I've got with me a very interesting character, Dr. Avi Rushnik. Rushnik? Perfect. You actually pronounce it correctly that and, and indeed, and you are a professor at one of my favorite universities in the world, the University of Miami. You know, we're here in Miami. It makes perfectly good sense that you'd be lurking about. And you've got an idea here that can help all of my listeners. Yes, this is not only me. I have to give credit also to my wife. She's a professor there, too. She's sitting over there in the booth. Uh-huh. And that's her business card. All right, so so Sarah. It's Sarah, excellent. Right, and she's sitting right there. So, so, have you guys? What have you guys developed? So, what we developed is the concept. First of all, reverse engineering the Google algorithm. Reverse engineering the Google algorithm, which means that's in, a big deal. In plain English, be number one on Google with every class that you teach. Okay. So you you did it on your phone, right? You typed the name of my class, which was back test. Back test one. Followed by the week number. Yep. A semester normally is 11, week, 11 weeks of teaching okay. and two or three weeks of uh, midterm exams. Okay. So we just uh, broadcast live the teaching and we archive it. We broadcast it live on YouTube, which means unauthenticated anonymous. Okay. In plain English, you are in and out within a second. You don't need to type any username and password and any of the nonsense. Right, okay. Plus, you get a test of the lecture, so you can, you said yourself, test out of it. Right. I saw the test was on in the YouTube comments. That's right, in right. the description right. section, not the comments. You, can, you have another right, section. Right, you're right, the description section, you're right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, basically, I'm getting the whole class right there, and you can do it, and, and I can watch live if I want. That's right. So, what I was telling you, if we host you as a guest speaker from Tampa or anywhere in the world, right? our classes this semester are at 6.30, to, uh, Monday, Wednesday to 9 p.m. Okay. So, if you can come at this time... Right. We'll and most be, people, most working people can. Yeah. After a day of work, in the evening, in the East Coast... It's a, it's available to everybody worldwide. And so this is it's kind of like an online class. It is an online class, no, but it's it is not a live instructor led on-site class yep. that is broadcasted 
Live. Right. So you're talking about, I mean, this is, you know, this is not the University of Phoenix or anything like that. You're talking about no. getting a real class from the University of Miami. With real students. For free. If, for free. And if you want to associate yourself with a good-looking partner, like a student, yep. study with them, you'll see the students and they will see you. And you can exchange information and study outside of the class together for the next class or something like that, which right. you cannot do in the arrangement that you have with the other online uh, universities. Yeah, so I've heard these, this term called a MOOC, I think. That's right. What, 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 so what does massive, that stand for? Massive online open course. This is what this is. It's a MOOC. It's a MOOC. Okay. And the important thing to understand from the perspective of the university is that there is zero marginal cost, which you understood to my surprise. Right. So a zero marginal cost basically means that if, you know, if 100 people or if 1,000 people attend this YouTube class, well, this class that is also broadcast on YouTube, it doesn't cost the university anything. Yes. You know, they don't have to have tables and, or and chairs or anything not? for you. And why not? Because the instructor is paid for. The students have paid their tuition. Yep. The classroom is paid for. Yep. And the surve- we are using also surveillance cameras in the class. Right. To broadcast so it. So the cameras are already bought. Everything and the fiber, is bought. Yeah, the fiber optics are already run. That's so right. W- w- Plus, we are using the cell phones of the instructor and the students. And How so? So some students that are sitting in the class, they have the cell phone, right? Uh-huh. So they can use the cell phone to broadcast it. So Are they doing that? Okay. So we broadcast it using uh, Google Hangouts on air. Okay. So we have multiple angles. And even if one of them, you don't like one of them, you can go to another one. So we have multiple simultaneous broadcasts at the same time. Right. And it costs so much these days to go to college. This is a way to, well, for one, you can take the class for free. If you want to associate yourself with a university, there's some That's cost. That's right. But not much, comparatively. That's right. Compared to a quarter million dollars for an MBA, you'll pay a lot less. So, um, a quarter million, can you imagine by the time you had all the costs for an MBA, the dorms? Yeah. And the meals and everybody, everything else, it's a quarter million. A quarter million dollars, you got to do a lot. There's a lot of That's work in right. between here and paying back a quarter That's million right. dollars. Exactly. And, you know, versus just getting uh, go, well, attending one of these MOOCs. I can see why people like the classroom experience, but this is significantly less costly. Um, like, you know, Plus, you get the classroom experience if you like to. If you don't, it's okay. You can just listen to it anonymously. And nobody would know even that you listened to it. What courses, what majors um, are offered through University okay, of Miami? Okay, so this is, was an example. Backtest is the title of my course. Okay, backtest, yep. And backtest applies to going backwards in time to test something. Okay. In my case, I teach about trading algorithms. That okay. means when the computer trades autonomously, the computer buys and sells securities such as Bitcoin futures, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is called the trading algorithm. Okay. And before you connect it to your bank account, what is your number one concern? Um, whether it's going to take money out of my bank. <laughs> money. <laughs> That's my how big much, concern. <laughs> how much money will it take or how much money will it add? Right. So in doing back testing, you ask the algorithm, if I let you trade on my bank account for yep. the past year, past 10 years or past day, how much money would you have made? And it goes back and it executes according to the formula. An algorithm is a formula. It executes the algorithm and you'll see exactly how much money it would have made. Right. And backtesting is really important when you're talking about financial instruments of That's all sorts. Right. The reason is is because people have this very question. Um, you know, if, you may, if your financial instrument that you're attempting to sell has made money in the last three months, then people can see how much money it's made. That's and right. And they're, they're more confident that it's going to make money in the next three months. So this that is, doesn't make them right. It no, just makes them confident. That's right. <laughs> and you know, tomorrow... Yesterday's doesn't guarantee that it will be the same thing tomorrow. Right. But my class focuses on back testing. This is why I called it back test. Absolutely. There is another component to trading algorithm, which is forecasting. Okay, forecast. Once, right. Once you, clear, I never put those two terms together. <laughs> backwards is going backwards in time. Right, forecasting right. is going forward in time. Yeah. Okay. So the next component is a forecasting class that I'm also teaching. Right. And that is when you are done with the back testing, then you want to forecast the future and make sure that it can not only the algorithm could not only do it well in the past, but also if Trump comes up with some crazy idea 
tomorrow and turn the market upside down, the mm-hmm. algorithm will handle it well too. So what, what, so what did you ask me about stops? Yeah, what classes, what classes could one take? Uh, what, so this what, is an example of one. Right. The cla- there, does it every class that the University of Miami has? Is no, some? this okay. is one, cl- one course. No, I'm just asking. One example. I'm can, an accounting professor. But can I take any class that the yes, University of Miami has? A lot of classes. but A not, lot of classes. Okay. But only our class. This is the research that we are doing before okay. uh, unveiling it and okay. running it on a large scale. Okay. So this is between me and her and some other professors that I are see. using it to develop all of it. So, so you're spearheading University of Miami's MOOC. The, yes. We okay. are doing research about it. The university was trying to do different kind of MOOCs. Yeah. And the problem is that a lot of them failed because it was too expensive. Yep. So everything that we are doing, the cost is zero. Right. There's no issue. And other issues were with the different software and technical problems. So we are trying to test this concept that can be extended well beyond the university. To a consortium of worldwide consortium of different universities. Yep. There's a big difference between charging for a MOOC and giving a MOOC away for free. Absolutely. If, um, you know, basically the university, it costs the university nothing if they're streaming on YouTube. Um, you know, if I have to sign up to pay $1 per month to take your MOOCs, that's a lot more work for me to go in, enter credit card numbers, all my information and all that's that other right. stuff. Where, whereas if I just go onto YouTube and I search back test right. um, and I find up, I find your course and I take that and or whatever I just decide to watch the course and I find it interesting I take the next one and the next one and the next one I will then know the information this is what I That's find That's right and you don't have any commitment you can take it whenever you want and when you finish it and you are ready when you are ready and you want to get the credit then you pay for it and you will take the exam under controlled environment it may be online but it will be in a place that somebody will uh, like a proctor will verify that you are right. you, that you didn't bring your friend to do, yep. take it, and that you are not cheating, that you are sitting there and you're taking it. If you want the real degree, there's a little there's, there's right. steps in between. Uh, Dr. Avi Rush, Rushenek, can yes. you tell me how people can get involved real quick? Yeah, the best way to get involved is just subscribe to the channel, and it will show you all the time. Every time that we do a new event, you'll get an alert. So search, back test. One with no yes, spaces. And then click on the channel and s- click subscribe. So like, subscribe, and follow. There you go. Yeah, Thank you, Doc. And then every time that a new session happens, you will get an alert from Google. Dr. Rush is uh, starting a new session in five minutes or something like that. Are you a cryptocurrency advocate? The Crypto Tip is the ideal outreach tool to help new people discover cryptocurrency. It's a printable business card size tip that you can give to service providers, preferably in addition to a good cash tip. When the server scans the QR code, it'll bring up an explanation of cryptocurrency, how to install a wallet, and allow them to claim the tip. If they don't claim the crypto, you get your tip refunded to you after a time period you specify. Plus, if they do claim the tip, you get an email alert. Create as many tips as you want at CryptoTip.org. That's CryptoTip.org.